Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. A couple of things. If you are in need of help or if you're watching this and you're at home, we do have FEMA outside to help people on the spot. They will help you uh, fill out the application. You can talk directly to them, ask some questions as it relates to the flood. And just for the record, it's for the June uh, 29th through July 2nd dates only. That's the only dates that have been approved by the governor. And then we're working on trying to get him to approve um, September 17th, which a lot of you guys have flood from that. So we're waiting to hear back. Once we hear back, we'll do the same thing like we did tonight. Um, I know I just sent out a robocall, so I thank y'all for that long line that's outside so you guys can get the much needed help because a lot of times people don't understand what's going on. And we also have been inside um, the village of Dalton knocking on doors last week. FEMA will be out here for seven days until Friday. So if you still need assistance, I know currently they're at the library. A lot of people don't know that the library is open. So if you need the help, we will also have them here at Village Hall and we will continue to walk and door knock. So I just don't want residents to be afraid that um, FEMA really is here, but you can call 911 and ask the police department about that inspector that's at your house. They do not come in and inspect the people that's taking the application information. I'm going to repeat that. They do not come in to inspect the ones that's out taking the application. So that's the ones that'll be out for the next uh, couple of days here in the village of Dalton. So when they come, all they're doing is taking your information, putting it in their iPad, it's going to their headquarters, and then they will um, schedule an inspection for you. Um, it's two ways that you receive money from FEMA. One is you do direct deposit. That means you have to give your own bank information. The other way is they will mail a check out to you. I just want to make it clear for those that don't understand how that works, because people do imitate, duplicate different people throughout our towns, whether it's ComEd, NICOR, um, but we do have things in place to make sure that nobody gets uh, defrauded as it relates to FEMA. So please, whatever you do, uh, make sure you call if you feel uncomfortable when someone's at your door. And they do have a badge too. I want you to know that. Have a badge on. So don't just go off of a uniform or a t-shirt or a vest. They have a badge that's registered to FEMA. So just call us here at the police department, not the village, call the police department. They have have a list of people that is or will be out um, helping residents. Okay. So next, let's start our board meeting. Okay. I would like to call to order our regularly scheduled board meeting. Today is October 2nd, 2023. Um, what's the time? It is 6.45 p.m. Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. Present. Trustee Stanley Brown. Present. Trustee Tammy Brown. Absent. Trustee House. Present. Trustee Holmes. Here. And Trustee Belcher. Here. We have a quorum. All right. If everyone would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you will continue to stand for prayer, uh, William, would you please take us, uh, lead us in prayer? Thank you. Thank you. Precious Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. And Father, I just ask, why does the heathen rage? Why does man ask for vain things? Father, I ask that you touch every heart in this place. Let us be honest and open. Bless us that we may be a blessing to others. And we thank you for the authority that you've placed in this, this village. Every one that's set up in authority has been set up by you. So, Father, anyone that comes against them are coming against you, Father. And we know that there is no weapon that is formed against them that shall prosper. And every tongue to come against them in judgment, you shall condemn. Thank you that you've made our enemies our footstool. So we stand in your power, your authority, your glory, that your name might be glorified in this village. We ask that you bless this meeting, that your name might be glorified. Touch every heart, every mind to do those things you call us to do and to be. And forever give you the glory, forever give you the praise. 
And for every intercessor, Lord, that has your heart, we ask that they pray that this place be changed, that your name might be glorified. And I thank you now in Jesus' name, your name that's above every name. And at that name, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And we thank you for it. Continue to bless our leader, Lord, exceeding abundant, but more than you can ask or think, Father. Thank you that you made her the head and not the tail. And we bless her. We bless her family. Bless all those, Father, that she has come in contact with, that your name may be glorified. Use her as a vessel of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Next, we have public comment. Um, you can make your way to the podium. You have three minutes. If you want to address this body, you have three minutes. And let me remind everybody, it is public comment. So you make your comment and it will be set on the record. Hi. How you doing, ma'am? My name is Victor Hayes. I'm part of the Masonic Lodge across the street on uh, 14141 Dalton. I mean, uh, King Drive. We were shut down. There was no reason why we was told we were shut down. It was uh, public places that were closed down after us that have since reopened. Uh, we paid uh, all our dues. No one told us what the fine was. And we're just trying to find out why are we still closed down. We are a nonprofit organization that what we do is charity work for the uh, uh, village of Dalton. And we would like to know why we are shut down and still shut down. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Good evening. We been open over there for five years, and now they closed us down. Uh, we have people that have died. We could not put a flag over the building or any of those things. All we are asking for is please let us open our building back up that we may have our meetings. We have church meetings over there at times, and we also have our regular meetings. We don't have our meetings public, but we have them privately. And we ask you again, will you please open, let us have our meetings in our building. We have other senior citizens over here just like I am. I'm a 90-year-old man. That's my pleasure going there into church. And I wish you would open it up for us, please. Thank you. Thank you. And if you can hold it down in the crowd while they address this body. Thank you. I'd like to say just one or two things. Mm -hmm. Well, Two or more gathered in my name, there also shall I be in the midst. I am a Mason. All right, I've been a Mason now for about 40 years. And I also can say we are an organization that's here for Dalton, all right, and to help things grow with God in control. I'm asking that please have mercy on us and give us the the power and the wisdom within us to make Dalton a better community. I pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we will make it a better community. Amen. Amen. My name is Dan Lee. I'm an over 30 year resident of Dalton, Illinois. And I have a few questions. I was going to address. I usually address my remarks towards the uh, the mayor and the and the uh, administrator, but I don't usually get answers, so I'm going to address my remarks to the audience. Okay. Uh, did you have the pleasant surprise of getting a call from the mayor today announcing FEMA? My question is, why can't we get those calls when these seven meetings, seven meetings, have been canceled? in the last few months, and we didn't get any notification other than uh, something on uh, media, not on media, on uh, social media, and possibly a notice on the door, but we, got no, we didn't get any phone calls for any of those seven meetings. We had, they had to call the special meeting last Tuesday, uh, September the 25th, a legal 
by State of Illinois Law meeting September 25th in order to make up for the last meeting that was abruptly canceled with absolutely no warning to us. If you can make a phone call for something that you want to promote, you can make a phone call for something that benefits the residents. That doesn't make any sense to do these things and keep doing it over and over seven times this year alone. Also, uh, for the record, uh, one of the contractors came there uh, asking us for damn near 400000 something. Four hundred something thousand dollars to cut some trees that he had been told that we did not have the money for and has no contract whatsoever. So basically, he was told to go get your money from who you who you signed the contract with because you don't have a contract with anybody uh, as far as the board is concerned or the or the people that live here in Dalton. So for you to come here and ask us for four hundred thousand dollars with no paper behind it other than what you've been told by two or three people, you got to be the biggest damn fool I ever saw in business. Please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Edward C., former trustee Edward C. Good to see the board, the mayor, the administration, the trustees. You can watch this last board meeting that we had was on, was on the Dalton Trustees YouTube page. Uh, I really want to address the law of the city of Dalton. The village of Dalton says the trustees pick the committees and the mayor doesn't follow that. It is hard Brother Stan, to see you struggle with them numbers, struggle when you don't legally, you don't have the right to do it, but you don't follow the law of the village. You follow the law of the mayor. The reality is the saying is we want our town to look like uh, Orland Park. Don't you want your town to look like Orland Park? You'll never have a town to look like Orland Park when you got a mayor that will dress up like Nino Brown, will have a DJ out of board meeting or put clap back videos at night with the light in their face like a scary movie. You never have that type of representation. Notice that the mayor used the term fake news. Who used the term fake news? A notorious liar who will lie about everything. You can have Trump on tape saying something, and he'll say fake news. He'll say, he'll say do your investigation, all the reports, all the money that's being spent frivolously, irresponsible, without board approval. It's unacceptable. And if you accept that because you can get a roof, or you can give trees, or you, which is all well and good, but she's blowing up the budget, blowing up the budget without the board of, board of trustees. You got a finance person in Jason House, which that's his profession. Keanu Belcher, that's her profession, but she's not, they're not on the town village trustees, I mean, town finances at all, because it's personal. So it's not about what's right and what's wrong. Brother Stan, you got to stand up. That's why I congratulated that night I won, but you won, I mean. I congratulate you because I wanted you to stand up because you know it's right. You've been a 30 year resident. You say that all the time and you let her just and you demean yourself by struggling through the numbers. That's not 33 years. That's not even your position. It should be the other trustees position because they make the laws and the rules and the sound committees. But he don't follow what the board says. The law says you follow what the mayor says. That's that's the trouble. That's it. Follow the Don't Trust the YouTube page and the Facebook page because there'll be more content because there's so much misinformation that's getting out there and being spread. And there's so much mismanagement of taxpayers' money, your taxpayers' money. Thank y'all. You yeah, have a good evening. But it's about what we do. So this is what I want to ask the Dalton administration. Um, these questions might help you come to some type of consideration for what is best for not only yourself, the village, and the legacy that. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. That mayor, you said your daughter is here and that you want to make Dalton the best place. And our legacy is not the things, but the legacy is what we can give to our children and others to build our character. So these are the, some of the things that the questions that I was led to ask you. Is it possible for our Dalton administration to show love, honor and respect for each other? That's one. Can you honor each other's positions, abilities, and skills and use them for the good of the people you serve? That's another one. 
he mentioned that each one of you had your own skills. I believe that God has placed you here for a reason. It is not to get the glory for ourselves, but to give him the glory. Dalton belongs to God. And we want to see Dalton advance, prosper in every area. Another question is, can you see each other to be part of a team that can make things happen in the spirit of excellence and unity? No big eyes or little U's. Do you have, do we have to choose as resident sides when only you have the real solution to the problem? We want our village to be strong, prosperous, and viable. Is it possible that the mayor and trustees can make this happen? I wanted to quote a scripture from Matthew 12, 25, when Jesus knew the thoughts of those who were coming against him. He said that, <clears throat> Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So this notion is to convey that when a house, a kingdom, a city, a village, or people are fighting against itself, it can't prosper or overcome any battle. This is not only spiritual, but this is a principle that we see existing in our homes, families, communities, and our nation. We have gained victories here in this village, but guess what? We are still losing. So why does the banner over Dalton have to have the imagery of chaos and confusion? That's something that we really need to think about. Good evening, everyone. I was unable to make the last board meeting held here in this building, but I was able to watch it on YouTube. Mayor, you mentioned my name again. You stated that I own an alley that you paved my alley. I do not have never purchased an alley. Please stop saying that is not my alley. You stated also that I don't like you. I don't think of you one way or the other. I do think that you're doing the residents of this village uh, injustice. And we all going to be judged at the end. And you can look this one up. Galatians 6 and 7. You will reap what you sow. And that go for all of us. Thank you. Hello. My name is uh, Marcia Cutright. I've been living in Dolphins since 1990. Um... I'm here for this several reasons. I'm trying to understand why they're tripling our taxes and my house is flooding when the rains were bad. I'm trying to understand when you pay the alley, which I, I, I believe me, I've been going through holes and potholes since I've been in on Martin Luther King Drive. Now it's paved, but they paved it higher than my garage. Now my garage is flooding. I reached out to public works, call, email, no response. So I'm trying to figure out who was, the, who was the, the contractor or the engineer who had the brilliant idea to pave an alley but don't understand how to make sure that the people who live in the alley don't get flooded from the pavement. Um, I had another, another one. Uh, and the, mostly about the disaster about FEMA, when is FEMA coming out? And you said that you're just waiting for them to, um, to get back with you about seven, you know, uh, September 17th. Uh, my whole basement got six inches of water. We had people, which I don't understand why the police didn't close off the street. The street was like a like a little river and people still coming through. And as they come through, they steady pushing water towards the houses. I mean, there were people who would stall and I would think that the fire department or somebody, maybe there was too many streets that was flooded that day. They couldn't block the street off, but it, it, was, it was crazy. Um, but it just, if they're going to increase our taxes, I think they need to, we need to improve the infrastructure. I've been here since 1990, and I'm telling you, it, it doesn't make sense. I'm surrounded by 
cities like South Holland and Calumet City that seem like they care about the residents and they always trying to improve the area and improve the, the, um, their village. I don't understand why Dalton, we, we can't see the beautification in Dalton. And I would move, but you know, you know, you can't move now because taxes are too high to move. But anyway, that's all. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Well, I'm not a member. I'm not. A, I don't reside in Dalton, but I am a contractor who works in Dalton. I'm with. I'm the owner of SNS Lawn Service. I met the mayor in the um out when I was in the field, and she asked me to do a job for her. And when I rode around Dalton, I knew that job needed to be done right away. So I stopped what I was doing. All my clients in the city that I stay in, they came out here and took care of 160 properties in two weeks. And if this my whole entire route don't get done, it get done every two weeks, 160 properties. If you go down my whole route, I know some of these residents have seen a lot of these buildings, a lot of these streets that was messed up. These, these houses are done. The residents that's asked that trees is all in their gutters, I cut them. And I cut them for a little bit of nothing. But the fact is that I seen that last board meeting and I seen that we were taken out of getting paid. That wasn't the right thing to do. When a person does a job, regardless of what your situation is, you're supposed to pay that bill. That's how that goes. I can't, I can't, and, and, and number one, we work, we get paid once a month. So I can continue to be out here working, not knowing if I'm gonna get paid or not. Because the, the right thing to do is, you don't get paid, you stop your service. The mayor asked me to do a job and I didn't get paid and I still did my 160 properties. Rain, sleet, or snow. And I think that we deserve, I'm not worried about no other contractor, what they got going on. I'm worried about what I did. And I got all those streets together. Residents, did y'all see a lot of those buildings cleaned up in that front? My company did it. I'm not saying my, my, my company is the only one that did it, but I did 160 down Oak Street, Lincoln, and I'm the one that got that police station together. My company did the police state, that whole entire field. They looked at a mess when somebody did it. They did the front. We went around the back. It took us over two hours to do the police station and the fire department. I'm pretty sure they didn't see it. My company did that. That big commercial spot on Lincoln, those big field, my company did that. And right now, the company, that grass was up to here. You go past that right now, even the police station, it's no, the grass is not even two inches long. So when you do a job, I'm sure everybody agree in here, you deserve to get paid, right? If they check ain't here, what they gonna do? They gonna get mad, right? I just think we deserve to get paid. That's all I'm here for. I'm not here to argue with nobody. I'm not here to call nobody out or anything like that. I just come here to say, I did a job and I did the job when I didn't get paid. So I think I deserve to get paid. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Dodson. I'm with Sandra Claw Firm. Uh, been here before. Uh, what I'm hoping for is that uh, the group that we represent at 14948 South Woodlawn, which is SSG Dalton, they own the self storage facility, um, uh, looking for help in regards to getting uh, support of the administration and the trustees to support a resolution for the Class 8 uh, renewal. That's all I'm here for this evening, just to, for public record. But uh, hopefully uh, we can work this out and get moving forward and uh, seeing the continued investment at that location. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I want to say hello to everybody. Haven't seen everyone. And I thank God for each of you. I think everybody has good intentions and we make mistakes, we make um, mess ups too. And so I just wanna um, say, you know, I appreciate the lady saying that Dalton belongs to God because it does. I'm in agreement with you and I pray for our, my, our mayor and our trustees and I thank God so much for the policemen. Every time I hear the sirens, I'm praying for y'all because I've seen some stuff on TV that I've never seen in my life you, you all have to deal with. So thank you all and thank you to the fire department as well horrific stuff god bless y'all for the gift that you have and i just want to say um i want to ask a few questions 
I hear that our trustees are saying things about the mayor using monies and things like that. And I understand money is important because you can't run anything without it. My question is, perhaps the trustee can talk with me afterwards. Can the trustees that, you know, know the issues also that go on in Dalton, can you apply for grants to address those issues as well? Because I know that the mayor does bring in money, although you, you all are saying she's spending it. So can, with more of you all applying for certain things, if you can do it, can you do it? And maybe the attorney can answer that because it's one thing to have one person bring in the money and we're spending, spending, spending. But if you can get more on board to get some grants to do the footwork or whatever, or inquire and send them to the mayor. If you can't do it, then maybe do that because that'll help bring in some monies. And I do want to say again, what I said uh, some years ago, I know God put it on Mayor Tiffany Henry to be the mayor. You can't remove who God put there. And I voted for her and I'll do it again if I had to, because until he says otherwise, you can't change it. And, and you all may say, oh, she's imperfect, this, this, and that. People are always saying, oh, back in the Bible days, this really is still the Bible days. God chose imperfect people to sit in kingships. So you can't say I'm going to dethrone someone or move someone. You have to pray for them. And then when God opens the door for them to go somewhere else or to do better or whatever, then, you know, you can do what he wants you to do next. So pray for the mayor. I thank God for you, Mayor Henry. It's a big job. God bless you. I, I thank God for you trustees as well. You know, you're not perfect, but I thank y'all for what y'all believe you're doing. So, and so, um, I just want to also say, um, in regards to that, I said that about applying for grants and I do want an answer because I'm not asking and then going to walk away. I want answers to my questions. And so, um, the, um, I wanted to address something I saw in, a few times. I see the mayor sometimes giving the trustees the floor to say things and stuff like that during, I, I guess, the trustee time. So I'm asking that y'all don't leave out on her when she's talking. See what needs to be done. And yeah, I'll talk with you all later. God bless. How's everybody doing this evening? I'm here on behalf of Most Worship Spence Cook Grand Lodge, located directly across the street. Uh, since we've been in this community, we do charitable work within this community, and we don't ask for no funds. We pay for this out of our pockets. We work with uh, Brother Holmes during the Christmas party for the kids. We've supported Joe Trunk Tree. I assist the commander and them with the car shows every year. And we don't ask for nothing in return. We just want to have our place where we can meet. We didn't do nothing. We paid, uh, you say need the business license, we paid it. He wanted the paperwork, we gave it. He said we just waiting on an inspection and we've been waiting on an inspection since April. So all we asking is for our home back. Because as you heard from some of our fellow members who have been 30 and 40 year residents right here in Dalton, we come to uplift Dalton and we don't take and ask for nothing from Dalton. We give away 250 to 300 turkeys right there in that lot every year. All we ask in is for some support. We pay our way, we take care of our own. And please, that's all we ask is to get our inspection a simple inspection so we can open our doors. We don't involve in politics, none of that. So that don't matter to us. We are charitable. We hear about the youth and about the kids. When we look at what's going on today, Country Club Hills, armored car robbery, and a bank robbery. Within the same span this morning, we here to show the community it's something different out here. It's somewhere for them to go, to teach young men how to be grown men. Because every grown man ain't a grown man. And that's all we are trying to do is help build this community. And yes, some of our members don't even live out here, but then we got some travel all the way from Wisconsin to help support Dalton. And we just ask them to have our home back.
Good evening. Good evening. My name is Demarcus, a 27 year resident now. I asked that uh, I wasn't going to get up here, but it's, it seems like when somebody else is talking and you all don't like it, you Hold all it down, get, please. You all get louder. Um, I want to give my kudos to the administration again. I want to say you we all are doing a wonderful job. We're doing the best that we can do. We are rebuilding Dalton and restructuring Dalton. Things are going to get rattled up. Things are going to change, but change is here. Um, and continue to do what you're doing. I mean, we didn't, I didn't have this growing up. We didn't have this growing up. So the um, JB skating, everything that you, the ideas that you're bringing to Dalton, that's what we need here. And we need leadership like you. Thank you. How everybody doing today? All right. And so I have some concerns about the village of Dalton. I just want to make sure that we're in the village of Dalton in Cook County in the state of Illinois, and that this is in some kind of foreign country that's a monarchy. I want to make sure of that. I want people to be more transparent in this government and let the residents know that it was a $4 million loan taken out for water meters by Riley Rogers, and we got to pay it back over the course of 25 years off water revenue. So how accurate do you think your water bill going to be? They haven't been transparent in telling you guys that they gave him sole control of that money either. Does anybody have any water meters outside of their house? Did you pay for it? No. Okay, that's about three people. That's not $4 million worth, but thank you. Nextly, I wanna know why the clerk's office doesn't have proper minutes and agendas up for meetings. For the entire year of 2022 and 2023, there are no minutes. There are also no minutes for the year of 2021. There's a clerk and a deputy clerk. I would like those minutes posted for the record. Lastly, we do have a right to video record employees, anybody in official capacity working for the village of Dalton. So those lies need to be stopped. And when I'm filming, I don't expect anybody to approach my vehicle. And I don't expect the village vehicle to be left running in the street. This is not Mayberry. Somebody come around the corner and hit it. And speaking of which, the drag racing. Every weekend, all night long, up and down Sibley, it sound like NASCAR. Is anybody going to do anything about the drag racing? Nobody got nothing to say up here? Okay. See you at Let election time. Thank you.
right time. I was originally from Southside Chicago. And I didn't know nothing about Dalton. I have not know nothing about anybody in this year. But I tell you what, I bet I'm getting responses. I am no other authority to go to Congressman next because I need to take care of I don't know if there's maggots down there. I don't know if there's flies down there. But I got an ass flying all over my house. So it's got to come there. But we've got to be done. All right. Thank you. All right, that ends public comment. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. If you would like, stay after, and the department heads can address any issues that you may have. Um, let's start with mayor's report. So you guys know that the last board meeting that the board of trustees walked out as though I was giving my mayor's report. Half of the time, people in communities, they want to hear from their leader, their mayor. So you have to give me the same respect that I give you, whether you like me or not. I still respect the seat. And you guys sit in a seat that I sat in for eight years, and that's trustee. Your jobs, as I always tell y'all, is to legislate. You guys do not run a day-to-day -day operation, and you need to stop trying to. The job of the day-to-day -day operation is overseen by the village administrator, the management, and myself as your mayor. So please respect how the um, setup is. And it was like that before we got here. So what's any different? Because I'm a woman, so everybody want to run what I do. Y'all didn't try to run when Riley Rogers was up here, when Shaw was up here, when everybody that had this seat before me, um, you guys didn't say anything or attack them the way you attack me. Protect your mayor like you protect your mom, your sister, your daughter, your loved one. Make sure you be respectful of people when they have an opinion as it relates to giving you um, an answer. That's all I ever ask for everybody up here because I give the same to the board of trustees. When they want to speak, we let them speak in general announcement. We, we be quiet and we hear them out. And then when it's my time to speak, I give you my spiel of what we have been doing throughout our one month before y'all see us in another month. So that's what we're going to do this evening. You will hear from myself. You will hear from my department heads as it relates to everything that's going on in the village of Dawson. So first one, because I want to set some records straight. And please hold your, hold your comments. Because... At the end of the day, I never ever said my side of the story. You hear one side. And I wish people would stop listening to one side, get both sides. Uh, if anybody was taught the right way, it's hear all the information, then make judgment of things that you might hear that goes on. So to the right, we're going to put on the screen, and it will be the video as it relates to uh, fake news. And yes, I said it. Trust the Steve, you lost your seat. It is fake news as it relates to things that you guys hear in the media. It's a shame that y'all see one station that comes here in our village and go wrap it on your mayor and the trustees stand back and watch them do it. It's a shame that Trustee Norwood, Trustee Kiana Belcher, Trustee uh, Tammy Brown, and Trustee Jason House will go and stand before the media and be so negative as it relates to anything that's going on in our city. I have stated for the record, and I've stated several times, if you guys have a problem, an issue, ring my phone. I get my phone number out all the time to everybody. I'm going to give it out again just in case you guys don't have it. 708 297 6859. Trustees, 708. 2976859. So let me break down how the media sit here and drag people that they don't like, that they cannot control, that cannot be bought. Because that's really what the issue is, if y'all ain't seen it by now. The issue is people trying to control your mayor. I am a woman, but guess what? I'm a pit in the skirt. Understand that when I say that. And I'm not going to take no mess from nobody. I mean that. So y'all better um, be, come a little harder than that because y'all trying to drag my name. It ain't going to work. At the end of the day, I keep telling y'all, y'all going to put some respect on my name. I earned my seat. I won by 82%. I don't know how many times I got to keep telling y'all this. The people Hold voted it down for me. in the audience, please. Thank you. The people voted for me to lead, and that's exactly what I tend to do, lead, not follow you guys because you guys can't even follow each other, don't even know which way is up. You guys keeping us in a deficit. Every time they talk about deficit, y'all should ask them who creating this deficit. But tonight, hopefully you will get a lot of clarity of what's going on in our village. So here we go. Okay, you have to turn it up, James. Is that James or Tino? You want to back it up, please? 
understand. If you don't mind, can you help us out? Hold that mic to that TV, please. Or just slide over there. Thank you. Pause it for one minute, Jane, so he can get some value to it. Test and test. Okay, uh, pause it for one minute. So just for the record, what's going on right now, this was an interview that uh, Dan Flaco did for us here um, at the village as it relates to the hours. So this is the elephant in the ear, and I want to ad address it, the elephant in the room. You guys wrote, went on the news, Board of Trustees, and said that people was taking time, doing things with time for 303 hours, residents. Ask yourself this question. How can you work 303 hours? Please tell me, because I'm a workaholic. Anybody that truly know me, I work nonstop. As soon as I get up all the way to y'all sleep, I'm still on the street. So please tell me how you can work more hours in a day so I can do it. But 303 hours, come on now. Did nobody use common sense? And I'm speaking to my board. Not one of y'all use common sense. Not one of y'all calling and ask no questions. Y'all just got on the news and just went in, huh? So let's break it down. If Trustee Tammy Brown, I'm mad she's not here because she should have been here so she can get this lesson I'm about to give her. If she is a HR um, specialist, why didn't she know where the 303 hours came from? This is why I'm trying to educate the public. Where did 303 hours come from? Nobody used common sense to say that maybe it's vacation time, maybe it's comp time, which is um, paid time, due hours. Nobody nobody thought to think of that. Y'all just thought somebody went and, and ran amok. Uh -huh. We didn't do that at all. So that's why I'm clearing it up because these trustees that run to every negative story, and I mean at every negative story because they won't air time because y'all not listening to them. So they got to go and put a negative spin on what, what they think we're doing in the village, not facts, state facts. And any journalist that's, that reports stuff, they go check the facts. And this journalist never checked facts. That's why they're the lowest rating news station in the world. Everybody calling fake news from President Obama, President Trump, everybody, because they just report what others tell them. Why y'all bumming it in his ear? He wrote this ne negative story, which ain't true at all. Play the video. Now, just ask that question. How can somebody work 303 hours? This is Trustee Stan Brown reading it to the record. Pause the video. On that board meeting, it was on May 5th, 2023. It was for the pay period of 416 through 430. So anybody want to foil you and do the real research like you should have done before you made the story, they voted, this board right here, the entire board, voted to pay out the entire payroll for that day. So how they sitting here saying they don't know? Obviously, y'all must didn't read your package, but y'all got the same information that we gave to everybody else. But y'all voted to pay this individual and then anybody else, they payroll. Didn't ask no questions, didn't have no discussion, didn't do anything. But y'all ran to the media and tried to spin the narrative as though we was doing something wrong. So play the play the video. Okay. Pause. Next. Y'all say that these individuals work on my detail. When you did the FOIA request, it says no such thing. So how dare you assume and allege that the individuals that was given to them by the board of trustees say that they part of my detail. And it's false because people work here in the village to protect the residents. But they attached all those people to my detail. And it don't say that. It asks for hours of anybody, which was the names that they gave them, for a two-year period. Two-year period. It had nothing to do with mayor's detail. It had to do with a work history for two years. But did anybody ask that question? Did anybody break this down like I'm doing for you so that you can make sure you know what's going on? 
it's a shame that I got to be the mayor, the trustee, um, the reporter. I got to do all the research just to show the people how people just loud people names and spin it because y'all control the media, right? When the media can just put anything out on people, people tend to believe certain channels. That's one station you definitely shouldn't believe. But I want to show y'all the facts so that you can determine later for yourself when they go, because ain't nothing but a big smear campaign. They mad because God keep blessing me with things such as I'm your mayor, I'm your supervisor, and he keep blessing me. And like they say, whatever God got for you is for you. Can't no man or woman take it from you. So until people learn what it is and how to actually do research and stop just listening to hearsay, and I get it, bad news travel quicker than anything. And that's why it's called mess, messy people. Misery needs company. And that's what these four individuals need. They need company. They need you guys to like what they doing, which is nothing, in the village of Dalton. And I try to point out every single board meeting how they neglect y'all, how they don't pay bills to that one vendor that asked to get paid. The trustees took you out of that warrant list. And I've asked them and begged them to pay y'all because you guys are doing the service of the people, but people not paying attention to that. Lights everywhere in our village, especially on the west side where Trustee Norwood live, but she voted no to take care of the west side where she stay. Where they do that at? Either you want to service the people or you just here taking up a seat. That's why I tell everybody you are bench warmers. You are on the, you're on the seat for just a limited time. And people got to remember this when election time come up because them same individuals be at your door asking you for help when you need the help right now, right now, residents. Why keep putting your needs on hold for their wants? Because they wants should not out outweigh your needs. So we're going to go back to the video. How did you determine that all these individuals on the mayor's detail? Because somebody told you, because you didn't FOIA it, so somebody told you individual names. So reminding you that you put them and me at risk. Because anybody that know anything about security, you don't tell people names. You don't give people positions. But y'all did that to this woman. Y'all didn't do that to Riley Rogers. Y'all didn't do that to uh, Bill Shaw. Y'all didn't do that to Ronnie Lewis. You didn't do it to any of the men that sat in this seat before me that had a detail to them. So anybody that been here as long as I've been here, because remember, I tell y'all all day long, I grew here. Everybody else flew here. Because at the end of the day, I could tell you about every single mayor and they detail that was attached to them. But now when this woman takes this seat, it's a shame that now it's a problem. How? It wasn't a problem before. I'm not doing anything different than what was warranted for the seat. And we're going to continue so you can understand why. So this one's asking, is it normal to vote for things that you guys saw that you just heard in a board meeting? They voted for the individual to get paid. They voted for all of them to get paid. So if it was a big problem and they asked for that information, literally, was it, I think it was April, Tangini? About April, and then they just not playing this now. So you hear that all that time, didn't ask one question, meaning the news. Didn't ask one question. This is what I'm saying to you. All I can do is point it out and make you see the things that's wrong with this. Play the video. And I'm going to show you now how we send everything to every single trustee here. This is Tanjanika, our finance director. Those are attachments of payroll reports, financials. Y'all talk about transparency. I told you, stop letting them send y'all off. We send an email every single time about everything we do here in the village. There's your proof. All I can do is make you see, because right now you're just hearing things people say, hearsay. You should never judge a person off of hearsay. Come and see for yourself, because we send them what they need for board meetings to make votes, right? So if you got questions, if you're really reading all this information, you will ask your questions before a board meeting, and you will make sure that you can um, define why you're voting the way you're voting, but that's your proof. They had the payroll reports that they sat here and got on TV to my, oh my God, it's not true. No, y'all knew. Y'all knew about it. Play the video. And this is just breaking down and pointing out all the things attached. Pause. Pause. Now, you just saw a clip, and they ain't had no press conference about no trustees. That was the park district. 
Why is that clip inserted here talking about Dalton business as it relates to this board? So that's number one. Number two, he said that the lawsuit has not yet been settled. Come on, man. Come on, Flaco. You know better than that. If you are a true investigative journalist, you would have did your research. It's a shame that I got to sit here and do his job for him because he's trying to drag me. So I got to make sure I put the facts out. Here we go. And y'all make sure y'all get this to anybody in the audience that want it. Special details. The boys sue for every little thing. It's like it's like kids up here. Any Anytime they can't have they wear, it's like a kid that uh, you're playing with and you take your toy and you run, that's them. Uh, you can't play with me today. That's how they act. So this the lawsuit, just so you're aware of what's going on. This is the lawsuit that the board of trustees, except for trustee Stan Brown and trustee Andrew Holmes, sued me for saying I can't have a detail here in the village of Dalton. And when I say we won, we won that lawsuit. Here's the judgment. Here's the date. It's a March 14, 2023. We won the lawsuit, which states that, guess what? I can have a detail. And then on top of that, it's in the CBA. Yeah, for those that don't know what that is, collect the bargain agreement. That's the police contract. So that's why I'm trying to explain to you that every mayor has this. But you make a big emphasis about when I have it. When y'all do know I am the first. I'm the first youngest female mayor. Female. Get the most attacks because people want to control me. If y'all ain't saw that yet. And you cannot and will not. So I fight back. That's what this is all about. It's a power play. It's a money grab. Play the video. That's fact number one. So when y'all want to talk mess, get the facts right. Put this on y'all little hate groups. This right here, facts. And that's right there saying exactly what I just said. It's been dismissed. You cannot remove my detail from me. And there's the date, there's the stamp, there's the judge. You guys um, have that now. Medina's passing it out to you. Collective bargain agreement. That's what I just said. So now if you go look in the CBA, collective bargain agreement, which was approved by this board on May 2nd, 2022, it addressed paid out time, which is the comp time that you saw that individual, because they only pointed out one police officer. It's, it's a ton of officers that do that, but they pointed out one. And then... Um, protective uh, details. So it's fun to explain all that. Play the video. This one says, does it say paid out, Stan? I think it says paid out. Paid out. Yeah. Okay, paid time due hours. So it addresses this in the CBA. So when that individual turned in their money, uh, their time um, to get paid out for, it was the end of our fiscal year. Our quarter, yeah, our Village of Dalton fiscal year quarter. So they had to uh, put in a time before they lose it. Anybody that work in corporate America and things like that, you understand what I'm saying. So that's what that's for, and it's in their contract. So no one did nothing illegal. No one did nothing wrong. I wanted to just point it out to the people so you would know how to go fact check stuff when people just telling you stuff. That's number one. You playing the video? The next one. James, you playing? The next one is protective detail. That's in there as well, trustees. I'm giving y'all this lesson too, since y'all act like y'all didn't know. All of this is in the things that they voted for. And I just gave you the day. So when they voted for it, I gave you the information of everything that's in this CBA that's approved by this board. But they get up there and they spend things like someone's doing things or being reckless. How? And I'm showing you that they're approving the things that they're going on the news saying the opposite about. Play the video. And at this point, it's like no one had any questions about overtime. No one had any questions about what's going on. So, pause. Pause. So that little snip, snippet right there. They took that and spent it. So I'm going to show you the whole video of what I was saying before I basically said what I just said, which is I was singing the Rihanna song. I played that part for the residents. So go play the video, and it's going to explain why I said what I said, but they had to make it like I said, residents, pay me what you owe me. That's not what I said. 
because one thing they told me to let you know from my attorney to the, the guy that you got voted for is the Polar Concrete. Police station, village hall, firehouse, firewalk, and then how dare you not pay him? We owe that man almost a million dollars. And you talk about that. But you won't do what's wrong, none of y'all. But I'm going to tell you this. No, leave you with this. DJ, what, what they tell me to tell? Every single resident. Pay me what you owe me. So, so there you have it. You. So I'm talking about what the vendors had an issue with. And then basically, I basically just sung the song. You can hear it in the background of what they saying. And they saying, pay you what they owe you. That's it. You owe money, pay them. That vendor just got up there and said the exact same thing that I'm saying out of my mouth. You guys see them take out things that's targeted. Why are you targeting only certain vendors? But certain vendors you will pay. Certain vendors you won't pay. Why is that? They did the service, which the residents truly needed, but you won't pay to make them whole. That is the issue that we have before us. Um, play the video. This trusty house and how he feel about you residents. That's him taking vendors out. Who is supposed to make sure the village is protected if you guys want to pay the law firm that do the cases, the court cases? See, he said that you happy on Big Meg. But y'all don't pay attention to that little stuff, huh? But they sitting here playing with y'all pockets, playing with residents. Y'all should have a problem with that. So I'm going to leave you with this, with, with what I just stated. And I hope that put, cleared up some stuff for everybody that's going around uh, thinking people doing other things and not stating the facts and the truth. Because I'm definitely going to post that and I'm going to send that everywhere just like y'all want to go viral on, on dumb stuff, but not good stuff. They always post the negative, but not the things that we actually do in our community to build our community. Um, I keep telling y'all about my safety. I keep telling y'all about weirdos. I keep trying to explain to you, um, y'all got to hold it down until I'm done talking. If you don't like it, you can get out. So, Officers, quiet these people down, please. Next, what I'm trying to explain to y'all is about my safety. We get so much negativity because people put out so much um, mess about false things. Nothing positive, nothing that's factual, but they put it out. And what I have a problem with is, y'all do know, like a lot of y'all get up here and say, I got a daughter. I'm a single mom of a four-year-old child. So when we get people that run up on us, people that threaten me, people that do all these things, and I tell y'all, the public, it's a shame that no one sees how the media puts it out. And don't y'all think I need more security now that y'all did that? Don't y'all think we get a lot of more crazy people that actually um, text us, email us, follow us? Dan, Dan Faco. If you really was a true journalist, you follow me to a restaurant. You tell people where we are. Y'all telling names on social media about who y'all think my security details are. So you're putting them and their family at risk. You're putting me at risk. No one thinks like that. And you should. Any woman that's ever want to run for office or in power, you should think the same way I'm thinking. You have a family that you want to raise at the end of all this. We do this because we care. Anybody that really get into public service, you got to have a heart for people and you got to be able to go through the mess. Because I keep saying you're going to go through it, but we got to grow through it together. Because at the end of the day, people going to try to stop people that's really meant for good for you. People are here for good for you. Not to sit here and, and tear the village down. I wouldn't still be in this seat if I didn't care about residents or rebuilding my community where I actually grew up in. Everybody else, they got stories that they heard from somebody else. But I could tell you from my mouth to your ears what Dalton used to be and how it was. It was majority white, for those that don't know that. Majority. And I tell y'all this, and I say this all day long. We had wallpaper, flower wallpaper, green carpet. 
I went to school, like I said, with, with Susan. Them was my friends. It's not, it's not like that no longer. You can leave your bike outside and you're fine. Neighbors was helping each other. Ponderosa, Red Lobster, all these things on Sibley, gone. All I'm trying to say is, hey, we may not be able to build it the way it used to be, but we can build it better. And that's all I'm asking your support. But stop allowing them just to attack somebody because people can't have their way with me. Stop allowing them to just put negative things out there because people want things from me and I won't do it. At the end of the day, y'all didn't even ask about why is it that when all the liquor stores and um, some of the clubs are not open right now, the town being quiet, we ain't have too many issues, not, not no shootings. And people stand up here and talk about their businesses being closed, but don't tell y'all the facts. And I said, I wasn't going to talk about people's business, but I got to set the record straight because everybody lying on me, right? Y'all just think it's cute because you just want to lie, trustees. But half of the time, they didn't have shootings at that location, but they're not telling you that. One in particular on Sibley. When the shooting happened, they sprayed the whole Sibley. Did y'all know that AutoZone stuff was all broken out? Uh, Burger King, they had boards up all down Sibley. I don't know if you go that route home or drive to the grocery store. But you got to go out of your comfort zone, which is home and work, and go and drive around town and you will see what I'm talking about. So the minute you get the pull in liquor license, because they talk about business license, liquor license, where I am the liquor commissioner, people got an attitude. Now everybody want to talk, but they're not telling you how it's hurting our people. I don't want to be in front of a grieving mom um, because a straight bullet hit somebody and they driving by. Don't nobody, should nobody in here want that. All I'm saying is we can do better with less. And with less being, we don't need all them liquor stores and liquor establishments. We got over 40. Did y'all know that? That you can go buy liquor from. How much liquor are you going to drink? We can cut that. But the minute I say that, then it's, oh, she's stopping the business. No, I'm telling you, let's redevelop our area into something better. Let's pick an um, a, um, entertainment district for people like that to house. They don't have to be scattered throughout our town like that. But no one ever wants to hear my side or hear my vision or what I ran on. But everybody heard it. Them trustees, when they ran with me, you were selling mayor's vision at the doors. And now when it's time to implement the mayor's vision, nobody wants to implement it because they got their own hidden agenda. They got a puppet master. And they the puppets. That's the problem. I'm not joining that circus. I'm here to lead you guys. And I think we've been doing a damn good job of development our area. Half the stuff that we got, like I said before, we built with grant money. Half the stuff we need, we need more money. And I keep going and get money for y'all. I'm the only one that's bringing back money as it relates to a mayor. But no one sees that. That's why I say get credit when credit do. And to my women, support. Don't hate, appreciate. Like, support. Why is it so much hatred with, with women? That's sad. I am you. You are me. Let's support each other. Stop sitting here trying to drag somebody down. Because if it was for you, you would have had it. And if you want to come get it. So all I'm telling y'all is um, let's band together because everybody keeps saying unity. Me and the board, we are, we are divided. That's where we are because they keep doing stupid stuff. They keep on wasting your money. I know y'all think that we're going to mean that it's not going to happen. And the reason why I say that, and I can say this out of my mouth to you because most people give you masks, say, yeah, we're going to kumbaya. We not because everything they have done, they have done as a power play a money grab, and until you residents wake up and see that, you will never see what your mayor has been fighting for for you. Other things that they're doing right now, they done lost every court case, every one that they done sued me for. Literally, I'm 20 to 0. Y'all catch up. Get on the winning team. Throw in the white, white towel, please. But they ain't. They gonna keep suing, keep suing, keep suing, because it's not their money. Go spend your own money and sue, because y'all not gonna win. As I keep saying, as long as you just stay focused, have tunnel vision, and follow your heart and lead with love, hey, God always fix it because he fixed this. And another thing that they're not telling y'all, get y'all this other lawsuit. Since, since we're talking about lawsuits. For your case against the clerk, 
clerk was saying this, our department, they not this, they doing that. For your case, we won that. Security case, we won that. Fire commission, we won that. Referendum question, when y'all try to remove me from office. Seat that I won, and I got y'all y'all seats, but they try to remove me. All illegal stuff, but I keep telling the residents because I don't know if it's just because so many going against one that you just think it's the one. But you're right, I am the one to get the job done. But I need your support now. The biggest one that was the hottest news, because what the news was that when we was out, what, Saturday uh, with the rink and they were skating and everybody was happy. Where they was at? The signature case. Did you know they lost that? They went in the bank and removed me off a bank account. Where they do that at? They did that, though, for those that don't know that. And then when they went to the bank, they didn't go right here in town. They went all the way in Orleans. So who you got to hook up with in oil and to remove somebody out of a bank account? But they're not telling you that, right? They leave that part out. And we won that case right here, signature case on September 26, 2023. Illegal, unconstitutional, trustee house, son, somebody going to jail. Uh, Allison Key, I hope you got your, 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 your stripes up, but I'm letting you know. Because at the end of the day, it was illegal. But when I was telling y'all this, you had like it was the mayor because people was banding together to, to do all this mess. And in the midst of this, in the midst of this, guys, because it's the fights that we got up here. Did you know that their lawyers, they on the agenda to get fired? Did you know that they went in and put a claim in, insurance claim, because they lost the signature case. When they lost that, they tried to backdoor dealers and take $2 million. $2 million. But they're not telling y'all that. This they lawyers. They lawyers. The trustee lawyers. Yeah, what? Y'all never know. See, don't be knowing nothing. But they got these are the ones that's leading them. So all they doing is just running the bill up, running the bill up, running the bill up. Then they say that we owe them this money. Since when? Nobody told y'all to do all that, but y'all letting them lead y'all the wrong way. It's not right. And all I can do is just keep on fighting, keep on telling y'all, hey, guys, this is going on. And then you choose to believe what you want to believe. But I'm stating facts. I'm getting you court cases. I'm getting you judges, judges signing out. I'm giving you stuff of them doing wrong. And they talk about a deficit. The deficit is because of them. Whatever they didn't pay, when they don't pay somebody, anybody understand how deficit works? When you don't pay somebody, that bill still exists. So the next month, guess what? It went up. The next month, the next month. Just like y'all did everybody else, y'all owed this one vendor a million bucks. Y'all voted for it to pay them when trustee uh, Tammy Brown flipped on y'all and voted to pay all the bills. Trustee House chose not to sign the check. But this the game we play. This the politics of it. And all I'm trying to tell y'all is, is the love that you get from me that you need, but yet you got people like that. It's the devil, man. The devil trying to take us down. And we not going. We're going to keep fighting until we get it right. And right now, we're on the right track. And with that being said, because we're back on the bank account, guess what? Guess what I'm about to do? Everybody get roofs and windows. You get a roof, you get a window. Everybody get roofs and windows. What you mean? <laughs> so if you on the list and you've been waiting for so long, we will um, start that up. Because I say that every meeting, and then it gets stopped or blocked by the board of trustees. Yeah, y'all write your notes because you're going to have to keep up with me. Keep, keep up. But I'll make sure that everybody can um, be made whole because y'all been waiting. And we have the money. That's the crazy part about it all. We have the money. They stopped it during election time. Did y'all know that? They didn't want y'all to uh, get rough and windows, then went around lying, talking about it's the mayor. How's the mayor and it's the program I created? How? It's because trustee ASDs wanted me to give him a roof and was mad I didn't. But this is the game we play. When you don't do something for them, then they won't do for the people. That's bad. That's sad. And I need you guys to remember these moments because right now we all over the news because of them. We're not over the news because of me. It's because everything they go tell the media, right? But then they lie. At least you're supposed to do is research, check, fact check. That's why I don't nobody believe fake news. Y'all did all of that and look bad because if y'all at my door, I'm asking, what are y'all doing to fix it? You could tell, tell me about somebody until you blew in the face. What difference does it make? What are you doing to change the narrative? Then they turn around and have a secret squirrel meeting at the park district. Why? 
just to pass their narrative of the things they want done. They they had a meeting of firing people. They had that same attorney act as though they the attorney. This is our attorney. He can't represent the village. Y'all got closed session items. How y'all doing that without the board? The board include myself, trustee Holmes, trustee Stan Brown. Y'all have none of us there. Y'all just making all the decisions for y'all. Huh? Y'all do know that's a quorum. That's a violation of Open Means Act. But these are the things that they do. But people that don't know, they don't understand the process. And all I can do is educate you and say, hey, guys, this happening. This going on. They need to do this. They need to do that. But no one's telling you that. They just want you to follow stupid, follow dumb. No, nah, don't do that. Read, guys. I, I can't stress that enough. Read. Because if you don't read, man, you will go down a, a, a dark tunnel and it'd be hard to get out. Another thing we got is a proclamation. Um, I declared our area a national disaster for the September um, 17th date. I just want to stress that to residents that keep asking for that particular date. Um, we have to wait to the governor declare it a national disaster. Once he do that, then now you will get aid and assistance from FEMA. FEMA was outside. I don't know if they're still out there now. And they was helping residents from the flood for the June 29th through the July 2nd um, date. So if you still need the help, you still can go on FEMA.gov and you can apply and they will send someone out to do the inspection. I just want to make sure that you know that that exists. Next, I want to tell you all about a couple great things that we do have. Um, I told you about FEMA coming out, walking, doing a walk and talk and um, filling application door to door. We did that last week. I told you about the dates that you need to be aware of because people don't know. I'm going to repeat it again. June 29th through July 2nd. I'm the only approved dates to get FEMA assisting, guys. And if you need any additional help, I am also your supervisor, Thorn Township. And we are helping with light bills, gas bill, water bill. Um, we also helping with transportation for the month of October. It will be free to anyone in our township. If you need to go to the store, you need to go get your hair done, you need to take your kid to um, school, things like that. Because I know people lost their cars in the flood, too. So that's only for 30 days. These are the resources that I already have. And I'm making sure that we just give it to the people because you need it. We do not have resources to give you big money like FEMA. FEMA can give you. $15,000, $20,000, because that's how much it's going to take to rebuild your basement and do a tear out. Um, digital meters. Digital meters are on the way. We are working on getting everybody um, whole because y'all been asked for that for year after year after year. And now we're going to start that before the year end. We're going to put digital meters and we're going to start in a segment because I don't want people calling and saying, well, you ain't on my side. You ain't this. We're going to do one zone and then another zone because we want to make sure it works and then teach our staff how to operate it. And all it is is they push a button, they drive down your block and they get all the readings. No one has to ever come in your house again. My goal, um, why I'm your mayor is to make sure I bring everything up to to date everything up to code as relates to what other towns are doing we're playing catch up uh, another issue that i had with the board they didn't even want to approve you guys to get the swimming pool the swimming pool's there that building's there no matter what it costs us money to upkeep it it costs us money to keep it there so my goal is to make sure we open the swimming pool um i'm praying that we get it open this month and i'm gonna make sure that everybody in our town as long as you sign up you will get free swimming lessons because what I don't like is that most black people say they can't swim. So I want to make sure I give you the tools that you need so that you can just go in the water and you will um, survive if you're on, a, on somebody's boat. So that's that. I am looking for swimming instructors. So if you are a swimming instructor, please apply. You can go online and apply, come in the village and apply. Front desk, you can see Larry or Ms. Linda and get an application. Just put swimming instructor. Um, we are also hiring for Just Ice Rink. We are taking um, bookings for that, too. If you want to book it out for a birthday party, um, a family reunion, call 708-297-6859. And we will make sure that we uh, rent the space out to you again. Here it is. You're a mayor creating revenue opportunities. This is my point. You have to build something, create revenue streams for you. We can cry all day about what it ain't and what happened in the past. But what are we doing to fix it? That's all I want to talk about. What are we going to fix it? Um, next, street lights. We are putting street lights up. If you go on that west side, when we cut those trees down, we made sure we put up uh, street lights in areas that has been really, really dark. And a lot of residents are happy about that. But I know that the board wasn't paying certain vendors. So now we're going to start back now that the bank count back. So we're going to start back everything and give y'all what y'all need because these are things you need before the snow hit. 
um, because I want people to feel safe when you go into your car, especially women. I get it. When you're going to get the groceries out, when you got your kid or your grandbabies, they're running around and you're like, stop, get in the house. So I get it. So my job is to make sure that everyone's protected, but I'm really uh, dear to the women because I am you and I understand that because I had that same problem with Jess is running around. So I just want to light up the block so that you can get to and from your car safely. Uh, concrete. Um, right now we're out. I don't know if you saw us today. Uh, we're doing street repaving and we're doing alleys and also we're still doing sidewalks. So if you're in need of a sidewalk replacement, let us know because there's no way you should have been ever paying 50 50. When we had 50 50, when the previous mayors was here, we thought that was golden. I pay 50 percent. You pay 50 percent. Why are we doing that? Y'all do know that's a village on sidewalk. They should pay the whole amount. So I'm letting you know that um, your mayor, uh, along with the two trustees that always support me, Trustee Stan Brown, Trustee Andrew Holmes, um, we basically vow to not charge the residents anything to pour a sidewalk. So if you need it, let us know. Just give us a text or email, or you can let me know tonight, and then we'll make sure that it's on the list, and then they will get out and they will repair that sidewalk. Because just like your, your grandkids and your kids, they ride their bike up and down. You got tree roots um, bring the sidewalk up, things like that. But let us know so we can take care of it. And again, give us time because it did not get messed up like this overnight and it's not going to get fixed overnight. Um, it's been two years and I think we've been doing an awesome job for two years and with all the controversy, but still keep going. We never stop. We still go. We might do a little here, a little there, but now we're going to go full steam ahead. Uh, face painters, balloon artists, uh, and caterers. I'm always looking for people like that for our events. We have events, which is community outreach. If you have a business like that, please reach out to us because we need it here and we also need it at Thornton Township. I told you about the gospel fest. We rescheduled that last time because everybody was in need. Um, that's right around when the storm happened and we made it a relief center and we made a relief center. A lot of you guys got help from FEMA and all the resources we have at Thorn Township. Something I forgot to mention is we do have a food pantry. If you need food residents, let us know. I don't care about that Bentley you driving, that Mercedes you driving. I'm going to still bring you some food. So don't be um, too prideful to get help. Let us know and we will um, take care of you. CETA starting up, um, what you did today, uh, for general assistance at the township. Uh, it resumed on October 2nd. Um, make sure you sign up and it will resume all the way to August 15th, 2024. So sign up for that. What else do I want to tell you? The township GA department is 708-596-6040, extension 3134. Again, the number is 708-596-6040, extension 3134. And you can apply at the 333 East 162nd Street. That is the location of Thornton Township to get help with any of the services I name. Food pantry, uh, light bill, gas bill, water bill, things of that nature. Anybody can um, assist you with it. Uh, Holidays coming up, Thanksgiving. We're doing turkey drives, or tur turkey giveaway, turkey giveaway, and ham giveaway. You can give one other up, can't have both. So make sure you sign up for that so that you will be on the list to get that. And then we're going to have some for the kids because I know you guys always need somewhere safe for your kids to go for October 31st for Halloween. Um, that ends my report as relates to all the things we got going on. And I know it was long, but I had to make sure that I stated all the facts and that you guys knew what was going on in your town because half of the town, somebody's telling you what's going on and you don't see for yourself. I hope that was re really, really factual that you got the information and you got the lawsuits. I hope that anybody that wanted it, you got the signature case for the bank account and then you also got um, the other lawsuit for the security detail. I just want you to know that people will always try to uh, fight against progress, but at the end of the day, change is hard. Change is difficult, but it's needed in our village. And I think that we're on the right track. I feel we are. And I love the residents for all your love, support, email, texts that you sent out to me, just supporting me and uplifting me. I love y'all for that because I truly, truly needed that because y'all forget that I am human too. I understand that we fight, but I am a person and I just need um, support sometimes from other people, even from the ones that always get up and say, uh, Mayor, you said my name. Yeah, I said your name because I just show, I'll be pointing out to y'all people that's against me. I don't pick and choose who get uh, a street done, a tree cut. That, people that don't like me, I call them my haters or my enemies. They still get service because at the end of the day, it's a full block of residents. I cannot 
neglect that block just for one. My goal is to make sure that I take care of everybody, even the haters. And I might pull up and record it just to show people that we truly are friends, right? Tr trustee, uh, <laughs> she asked trustee stubs, but I just want people to know that thank you for calling me to get the help that you needed because I'm going to show up regardless of what people say, or think or feel about me. Cause like everybody say here, it's not like no, all you are about God first. Only he can judge you. Only he can make it right or fix it. No matter what anybody say, you have to answer to him. So that's why I tell you guys that follow the little hate groups or just uh, talk about people. Stop. Because today, not promise. Tomorrow, not promise. I mean it. Stop. Because I get calls. I got a call the other day about somebody um, really close to me. Uh, he is Commissioner Kyle. Kyle over at the park district. He lost his mom. She just passed away. I'm pointing things out because I don't want anybody to feel no pain like that. And I want y'all to love on each other. And that's why I always tell y'all, just tell each other y'all love them. Kiss your loved ones before you leave because you just don't know. And that's why I try to stress that to y'all and why y'all keep seeing me leave with love. Because at the end of the day, it's only between you and him when it's just you and him. Everybody else is just noise. Block it out. I promise you, you'll be okay. Block it out. But that's the end of my report. I thank you guys for listening. Uh, hopefully it was helpful information and we will drop the video later. Uh, we got two videos. Where you at, um, James? Where you at? Two videos. And it's a shame I had to put my report first because people want to walk out all the time. But this is one um, video in a storm. This is your mayor along with trustee Stan Brown. We was out on the September 17th date pushing people out of the water, out of the flood. But these are the things that I do. These are the things they don't show. They don't show the heart, the heart I have for the people. So we want to point this out as another um, example of the people's mayor pushing people out of the flood. I try, I try to tell y'all I'm, I'm little, but I'm mighty and strong. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so that's that's one example. Um, you got another video? That way we can speed it up for them. And we do this because some people are visual. They want to see. So. <laughs> okay, what is that? So <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but okay. That's just an example of trustee house taking tree service out. And then the very next day, as I told y'all, don't play with God. The next day we had a storm and trees fell on people's cars, people's homes. And those same vendors that they took out all came out and cut down trees from your houses, from your cars. And that's what I mean about relationships. People try to destroy it by not paying people. Now you put the, the village in, in a hurdle because now it's like, how do you help the resident that's calling you? Y'all not calling them. Y'all calling the mayor. So we want to make sure that we help the people no matter what. And thank you, um, Johns, for coming out and still cutting in Murph, k &M Ventures, for cutting down the residence trees. So... This is something we did when it was the hottest day. And this is what I mean when um, um, that fake news reporter, Flaco, came and followed us. It was 100-degree weather. We was out. And my team, they, they was mad at me, but it's okay, because we were sweating bullets. And basically, basically, um, what? basically, they wanted to go back in. And they was all sweating. And I just want to point it out because I had the police department out, the fire department out, public works was out. Everybody came out to help. And that's something that I do always. This ain't just right now. And guess what? I'm not up. Election time not here. I'm not up to 2025. Let's be clear on that. That's because I care. So if you was a senior that day in the house, we, we either got you out the house, we took you to our cooling station, we did everything possible. We got you bottled water, we did everything. And I want to thank my team because without them, it wouldn't be possible. Even Chief Collin was sweating. They, they had him carrying the water. But they don't tell that story. They just run up on us for negativity but didn't show 
why we was doing that thing we doing. This is us doing outreach. This is us going door to door, telling people about all the services I just named here. Because people just don't know. They don't know all these things exist at Thornton Township and here at the village. And that's my slogan. My baby said that. She said, never, never, ever give up. So I just want you guys to coin that and y'all remember that. Never give up. All right. So that concludes that concludes your videos, James. Okay. So that concludes our videos uh, for this evening. I will now go into the veto message. Okay, so you guys know about the secret score meeting that the board of trustees had at the park district. I am vetoing all the things that they think they passed uh, without this board, meaning the, the complete body. So that is what my veto message um, basically says in a nutshell. Um, you guys cannot do secret score meetings without us. They even went as far as to uh, pass a budget. When I know trustees and Brown been asking about having finance committee meetings, I know that uh, half the time the administration uh, would like to have some information or input as it relates to their line items. But no one asked them, meaning the administration, what they needs were, uh, what they wants were. No one asked anything. Y'all just passed a budget without any input from this body. And that's why it's, it's so sad and hurtful because how you know what they need if you guys are never here? They run the day to day. You need to talk to them so you'll know, hey, maybe they chipper went down. Maybe they need a new sweeper. You don't know, but you you just pass something blind. And then how dare you guys take out the overtime out of the budget? Why would y'all do that? If y'all anybody know how a budget go, the unforeseen happen. And that's what generates normally OT. Prime example today. We had one of our officers get in an accident, car flipped over on Lincoln and Ellis, for those that don't know. So that means what? That officer is going to be off. So that means what? Now someone has to basically cover her shift. What does that mean next? That creates overtime. I don't know how better to explain things to people, but somebody got to tell y'all the facts and just stop believing the the, the naysayers, the, the wannabes, like stop, because that's not what it is. But people got to use common sense as to, well, let me think why this is the way it is. And all I could do is just tell you guys. Um, another thing the board did, um, they didn't pay uh, for the gas leak that was over in the west side. This was at a previous board meeting. I asked the board to make sure they fix it. They told me I'm lying about the gas leak. So then we have the department head speak to the gas leak and they voted it down, would not pay for the gas leak. Y'all know I'm not going to do that. Y'all know we fixed that gas leak. I'm not going to let the whole town blow up because y'all made. Y'all got to do what you got elected to do, which is to feed the people, make sure you give them the resources that's needed. And they didn't do it. Two other big issues that was on the table. One, Chief Collins, he asked for cameras in the police station. They voted no. Why would you vote no? How do you do um, investigations? Y'all ain't got no cameras. How? These are the things that we fight up here about. But residents don't understand how important that is to a department head. But if they asked the right questions, they would have known why it's needed. And why would you not vote for that? Another issue, Chief McCain, the fire chief. Did you know that they voted no to fix the door, the garage door for the firehouse? How do you get the engine out? We telling you about the problem before it be a problem and y'all have a fire and we can't get to you. Anything with public safety is all about time. Time. And if we can't get the engine out because we playing with the door and now your whole house burned down or your car blow up because your car on fire, now what? All I can tell you is the issues that we fight against and all we do is we just keep going, keep going. Throughout all the mess that they should be voting for and should be doing and fixing, they're not doing. And I'm telling you all this because you need to know. Because people tell you one side, but you don't go get the other side to understand the facts. So you understand why the fight is, why the tug of lug is. It's sad because here it is. Y'all got an active mayor, active. I always on the street. Y'all can always see me, always find me, call my phone, get my cell number. Active. No other mayor is more active than me. I'm running circles around everybody. That's the issue. Can't nobody keep up with me. Try. But I'm just saying. 
Give us the tools we need so we can fix the things that's been broken for so long. It's been broken for too long that now y'all don't want to hear no excuse. Y'all want to hear when you're going to fix it. That's all residents want to hear. And I'm with y'all on it because I agree. I would want the same thing once y'all get a new administration in. You want to know when that administration going to fix it. When you going to cut my tree? When you going to put lights up? When you going to do my sidewalk? When you going to do my streets? Everybody wants the same thing. But it's a matter of what we do to get to that point. Because I say this example all the time. Everybody do the cha-cha slide, right? Right to the right, to the left. But everybody put their own little flavor on it, right? So you can't be mad at how I put my flavor on how I govern. But we all get to the same point. But it's all about it's your time to lead. You write your own narrative. You don't let other people write your narrative. It's your life to live. You figure out what you want to do, and that's what you do. When we meet, we do a think tank. When we meet, we talk about solutions. We don't talk about people. You can't sit at my table if you talk about people. We don't do that. I didn't grow up like that. My parents taught me to be a thinker, a leader, someone that comes up with solutions. And this is why we can create and do the things we're doing here. Nobody ever saw that, that dream over there of that ice rink. Just stay tuned. I'm going to build a whole six flag on Greenwood Falls. You'll see. You're going to hear about it. Keep telling y'all. <laughs> and I always tell you, um, come see about it. Don't hear about it. I tell everybody that. For those that keep hearing about it, I told you, put your eyes on it. You understand, Tiffany in your. But that's where we are. And I'm going to give the flow because um, my team got a lot to say this evening. And, it, yeah, it's going to be a long board meeting because it's just so much mess going on. And we had to get that out to the public. And y'all should come to conversation with the mayor. That way you'll understand all the things to come. You'll see the vision. You'll see the development. You'll see the uh, 300 West Sibley. That's something else this board holding up. 10 sit-down restaurants for you, residents. 10 sit-down restaurants. Sit down, not carry out. Think about it. I, I can't think of one spot you can literally go sit and eat in our soft land that's close by without going all the way to Orland or Bolingbrook or somewhere else. We don't have that. Even Olivia's closed early. You need what you keep running to. You want them to run our communities now. Give us their, their tax money over here. That's what we want. But all I can do is put it out there and then hopefully, hopefully people will vote for it or they'll see that the change is needed because obviously a lot of people don't live here. You got people, board members not voting for certain ordinances because they house out of whack, trustee Norwood. You got bushes everywhere, outgrown, but you won't vote for the ordinances to make sure we do beautification. But these are the issues we got. And all I can do is point it out to you because at the end of the day, you're not voting up stuff. You're holding up progress. But you got all these issues. But you need to fix it. And I keep telling people, fix your house. But you come try to fix somebody else's house. But no one's doing it. And all I can keep doing is just showing y'all, showing y'all. Because at the end of the day, y'all, I'm telling y'all now, and I'm going to keep on saying this. Y'all better stop lying on me before I stop telling the truth on y'all. Please stop. Because I don't mess with nobody. I come do my job. Only time y'all see me say something is when I have to clear something up. And I shouldn't have to because I'm too busy doing my job. So I don't have time to come back here and talk about nothing. But that's where it's at. We have to keep clearing it up because people want to tell lies. People want to be famous. There's a lot of jealousy and envy too. People are so upset that I have both seats. As I stated before, if God put me there, what are you so upset about? Work with me. Because there's many people that went on that table before me, but God saw fit to give it to me. So how you mad? I keep saying, don't hate, congratulate. Come join the team, the winning team. As I stated before, I'm 20 to 0. Y'all ain't got not one win under y'all. But y'all waste all this money to the residents because that's who wasting your money. That's where the deficit come from, the trustees. They the one creating the deficit. They the one not paying vendors. As you hear them all, get up here and say, them. But everybody pointing the finger up here. But it's really them. And that's why I'm bringing it up. Because I need people to wake up and pay attention. And I thank y'all that's all still with me. So thank y'all. And uh, do this for me real quick. We're going to lighten it up. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. I, love I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Love on each other. Hug <laughs> on each other. Thank you so much. Oh, all right. So we're going to move on. So I spoke about the veto. You want to just okay. Um, the sure, sure. So the attorney is going to talk about the veto um, that I'm doing for the secret score meeting on September 25th, 2023. So go, go ahead, attorney. Okay, thank you. Um, this is 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the items that are being vetoed by the mayor for th that were passed by the uh, Board of Trustees at the September 25th, 2023 special meeting are ordinance number 23-002, and that's an ordinance establishing rules and regulations for the Freedom of Information Act and uh, act responses and requests. And the main reason that that is being vetoed is because in our in, in the mayor's opinion, and we share this, it exceeds the authority granted under the code, under the Freedom of Information Act, as well as the Illinois Municipal Code to the trustees. And that was verified by the September 26th order of Judge Gamrath, where the judge specifically had stated although it was not related specifically to the check signing ordinance, but the judge had stated in many different places in that case that the board was attempting to over um, to, to, to overcompensate and to essentially take the authority from the exec executive branch. In all branches of government, there are in all, in all governments within the United States, there are basically a judicial, executive, and legislative. The trustees are the legislative, the mayor is the executive. And so the judge had stated that they were infringing upon the powers of the executive body, as well as performing other such acts that were not constitutional. So that was one of the reasons that the FOIA ordinance is being vetoed, as well as other reasons that are stated in the veto message. I won't read the whole thing because it's very long, but just wanted to give a brief summary. Uh, the the appropriations ordinance for 2023 to 2024, this is ordinance number 23-012, is also being vetoed for a multitude of reasons. One, again, it's them exceeding their authority and unconstitutionally attempting to change a form of government, uh, just as what had occurred in the a check signing case. And in addition to that, the requirements of Section 8-2-9 of the Illinois Municipal Code as it relates to the passage of an appropriations ordinance were not adhered to. So therefore, the ordinance, in our opinion, is invalid on its face. And that's one of the reasons that the mayor is vetoing that ordinance. Uh, next is the veto of the business license code amendment and this is ordinance number 23-012 not only does this ordinance again exceed the authority of the legislative body but it actually creates a conflict within the code it attempts to take the power and right of the mayor to issue a business licenses away from the mayor and give it to the trustees however to be quite honest it was very sloppy draftsmanship because they did not actually look at the entire section of section 3-1 uh, of that chapter of that code because there were other places in the code that if they wanted to make this amendment, they did not do it completely. But even so, even, even if they did do it completely, uh, to be quite candid, in our opinion, it exceeds the authority of the, of the board and again, infringes upon the separation of powers. So that ordinance is likewise being vetoed by the mayor. Uh, the IGA with the Dalton Park District is also being vetoed by the mayor. Uh, first of all, the mayor has never been presented with a copy of the IGA. It's some mysterious IGA with the park district seemingly related to the issuance of building permits. Um, building permits are a very important thing. And building code adherence is very important for life and safety. And it's also very important for the firefighters and police officers and other public officials that enter into those buildings, as well as the residents that reside there um, or, or use that that facility. So in this case, it's park district facilities to waive construction permits. It just basically allows them to do construction without any oversight. And that again, in our opinion, exceeds the authority of the executive branch and creates a very precarious situation for both the village, its residents and the users of the park district. And finally, the mayor is also vetoing the settlement of the settle of I'm sorry, vetoing the settlement agreement in the Hudson versus village of Dalton case. This one was a little strange because somehow um, the trustees attorney, the legislative council was assigned to the case, but nobody can really understand how they were assigned to the case because their role as legislative counsel is limited to advising the trustees in their legislative capacity. They are not allowed to actually appear on cases and 
be representing the trustees or the village itself in a case because this was not a case against the trustees. This was a case against the village. So first of all, in our in our opinion, Odelson's uh, office, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Odelson's office had basically exceeded their authority. I don't know how they got assigned this case. Um, we're still trying to figure that out. But nonetheless, it, it's is essentially a, again, trampling on the separation of powers. It is the village's insurance carrier that typically assigns these cases with the approval of the village. And that did not happen. So in consideration of all the things stated, these are the reasons that the mayor is vetoing those five items. Thank you. All right. So as she stated, is the number one problem. Everybody wants to tell me what to do or take my powers uh, mayor, and it don't work that way. I'm the executive branch. I ran to lead. I say that and I say that because their job is legislate, make laws, make rules, but they're not doing that. But they'll try to make a law as if it can hurt me or hurt the people, they'll make a law. Um, one being the business license and permits. And then the problem I have with that is Trustee Belcher, she keeps trying to get her friend to open up over in our community. And I will not have strip joints in Dalton. I will not have more liquor spaces in Dalton. So I constantly fight for the people and the people don't even understand what we're fighting over because they just say it's the mayor, it's the mayor, it's the mayor. No, it's them. If they were to tell y'all what they're trying to do, you'll understand why I'm saying no. We're not going to do that. This is supposed to be a community about family, not places where you go in club at all the time and every other weekend it's a shooting or something going wrong. Um. The park district. What I don't like that this board have attempted to do is stand with people just because they're against me. If you don't work for the village or work for any other body of government I govern, you go to the park. That's where all the rejects go. So when you go over there and you work there, now you become into the hate group. And then the hate group start all this chaos and this mess. And it's always like a I hate Tiffany type of people over there. And then the trustees go and they join the same hate group and now become more mess because now when the people see that, like residents see that, you think, oh, well, maybe the mayor did something. No, I have not. I keep on telling y'all my job is to protect you. If you live off of 142, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The prior year, they had a, a um, car show there. And if y'all want, go go research. And Chief Collins can attest to this. We had to call a layers call out. That means that we had to call officers from all over to help us because it was that many people out there. We then had to shut down that car show, and they was parking off the y'all know that live that live in town off the e way off that one lane. They was parking there, getting out the car, going to the car show. Come on, man. So y'all know when people get off that e way, they doing about 60, 70. before they decrease their speed. They are already at the park. So just imagine how many lives we had to save. If you go around Woodland that day, you couldn't get down there. A whole nother safety issue. So if it's a fire, somebody have a heart attack, got an issue. The ambulance couldn't go down there. The police couldn't go, nor could our engines. So my job, once again, is to protect you guys. They even hired or ordered a bird, what y'all call it, Chief Collins, a helicopter came. All this happened last year. So now this year, why would I allow the same mess to go on? My thing is, pull permits. Let us know that you're doing what you're doing. Don't just pop up and say we got an event. Let us know. But this board, once again, went and stood with them and act like we doing something wrong. But no one asked any questions. And that's another lawsuit. I don't got to have that one. For the park district that we won. We won that lawsuit too. So my point to y'all is, every time people go sue, we win the lawsuit. What they need to do is fix them slides. What they need to do is get them graffiti off that stuff over there. Why y'all wasting money on lawsuits that you ain't going to win? Because our kids matter. But no one's doing these things. Everybody doing this, talking, running their mouth. That's it, running their mouth because they ain't doing nothing else. But go fix what y'all care about. Because I don't even go there because somebody can get hurt. Because I'm going to be upset if my child get hurt coming down that slide. And I showed you a video just to prove to y'all I got fixed. They said, and I quote, oh, we fixed that stuff. We Everything is repaired now. No, it's not. Go over there and see for yourself and stop just believing the hype because it's not. And sometimes somebody got to say, you know what, enough, enough. I'm going to fight back. And when you fight back, as long as you're righteous in what you're doing, you will prevail. 
And that's why you keep seeing me prevail time after time after time. Because my heart, my spirit is in the right place. And people keep trying to take that from me. And I'm not going to allow it. And that's why I fight these people that sit on the same board. Because they don't mean no good for our town. They keep selling our town out. And I have a problem with that. I have a problem with people that get in politics and don't do right. And guess what? Anything that needs to be changed is going to take time. I keep saying that. But let's go through it together and fix it. But don't sell our town now, guys. Because at the end of the day, we still going to be here, even though y'all not here. Because I'm everywhere and they never there. That's the difference between me and my board. And I thank you again, Trustee Stan Brown. And I thank you again, Trustee Andrew Holmes. Those are the only two trustees that have ever, ever support anything that I have going on to develop our town. And this is why we get awarded the money. When we went out of town uh, to Springfield, they gave us $6.8 million they allocated for Dalton. Dalton. But if you're not in the room or you're not begging for stuff, how, how can you get things for your town? But people got to put stories out that ain't even true because you got the people. I have your hearts. Just like y'all got my heart, y'all got to hold on me, dog. Just like vice versa. So all I can tell you is that, hey, I'm going to keep leading with love. I'm going to stay positive, stay prayed up, and hopefully um, things will get better within the next couple months because right now everybody getting ripped some windows. So I'll just let y'all know that. So we're going to move on next, and we're going to talk about um, the clerk. Clerk, do you got a report? Okay, go ahead. everyone can you guys hear me hello hello okay so um let's see report a approval of minutes for september 5th 2023 regular board meeting i'm asking the board of trustees for their approval for that meeting that's not on the agenda it says approval of minutes it's not on the agenda so, so why is approval of minutes on here? Normally, just so you know how this go, Deputy Clerk, it has to say the date and the when you guys wanted the minutes. It will have a date back. It's not on the min on the agenda. And if you're paying attention, it's saying Mayor's veto, uh, veto on September 25th, 2023 minutes. So I said September 5th, not September 25th. Well, it's not and on there. Have, and thank you for clarifying, but it's not on there. I so. Said Hold on. Prior agendas have had approval of minutes without the dates on there. It's not on there, so please move on. Okay, so I'll move on to communications then. So you stated that you won the FOIA case. That judgment isn't until October the 13th, 2023. So that case is still open for the record. Also, we don't control the village website. Whatever is posted on the clerk's page, whatever is removed, whatever is added, we have no control over that, just for the record as well. I'm done, Mayor. Um, please take classes to learn how to do your job. I have. Because, hold on, hold on, hold on, Clark. Let me finish. Quiet, please. Because at the end of the day, if you got communications to talk to the public about something they need to know, please do that. You can throw your jabs or say whatever you think you need to say. And for the record, please make sure everything I said up here is typed up in those minutes since you want to be sarcastic about what's going on. Um, as it relates to the FOIA case, it says T-R-O denied. And it's for... Key versus Henyard, 22CH3329. So please get your facts right. So again, courts, hold on, hold on, the record. hold on. Courts dismiss without leave. Motion for leave filed, amended complaint by Keys. Denied. Dismissal granted. 09 14 20, 23. Again, this y'all problem that I have with y'all. When I tell y'all something, I state my facts, but y'all too busy trying to do a cop back that y'all don't even understand what y'all talking about. So that's what it says right here. And this is from the lawyers, meaning the village attorneys. Next, 
please, whatever you do, make sure that everyone's statements are in the record. And I know I said mine, but I want to say everybody's so that um, the residents can follow up with what's going on. And as it relates to y'all office, and I mean clerk key, because you're the deputy, I need you guys to make sure y'all stop sending things out for FOIA that don't make no sense if y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all job is to protect the village, protect the village, not assume what you think we don't have, not assume or give your opinion of anything. And please, deputy clerk, come to work because you don't be here. Please come to work. And then you will know what you should be giving out because it's many a times you have dropped the ball on foyers that you should have gave to our departments and y'all have not. So therefore, when a foyer need to go out, people don't even know it exists because you guys haven't given it to the department heads. That's another issue, let alone the issue. But you guys need to get your office in order and stay out of the mess because the clerk ain't nothing but a court reporter. That's what y'all do. Report what we do at minute at meetings. But yet y'all get in the mess. Y'all go have secret score meetings. Y'all call meetings, being disrespectful, walk out, leave. That ain't what you're supposed to do. You guys are supposed to be um, neutral because that's all y'all job entails, recording things and making sure minutes are done. So one thing one resident did say that I totally agree with is where is y'all minutes? Y'all done been here. You been what, a year, two years, two years, and y'all ain't got no minutes done, none. Come on, man. What are we paying you for? And this is what I'm talking about, residents. When everybody want to fight, everybody want to talk mess, but ain't nobody doing their job because everybody trying to do my job. Everybody trying to tell me what to do. And they all got jobs. They all got stuff that they should be doing, but they're not doing it. But everybody got something to say to me about my stuff, and I'm the only one producing, showing up and showing out, giving y'all everything that you need. But they not doing whatever their office is supposed to do. And y'all should have a problem with that. Moving may, on. May Next, we have village. May I be recognized? Go ahead. Okay. And so I'm going I'm to make this very quick because you already wasted enough of the people's time. Yeah. As it relates again to the final judgment for the FOIA case, it's October the 13th, 2023. And again, as it relates to the website, the minutes are not on there because we do not control the village's website. Whatever is posted, not posted, added, or removed has nothing to do with the clerk's office. Let me make sure I, I'm addressing everything. And also, as it relates to the minutes, as the village clerk has already communicated to you, we do not work, we do not write word for word. We follow what the open meetings adding the open meetings act states we don't follow what you say mayor what the law states is what we write check the law check the statutes and comprehend it and you'll see why we write it the way that we do it is a summary we have been here for almost two minutes and we haven't even gone through i mean two hours we haven't even gone through the agenda do you expect us to write that word for word I think you're looking for a transcriber, and that is not in our duties. We do not transcribe. If you would like a transcriber, perhaps you should address the board and add it to the budget. But myself nor the village clerk will be transcribing minutes word for word, and that is for the record. Thank you. All right. I'm going to say this, and we're going to move on. Y'all need to be respectful. And that's the problem here. Everybody, again, want to clap back. And then when I clap back, everybody got attitude. Be respectful, uh, Deputy Clerk. And your you problem, respect, hold on, you out of order. You out of I order. Not, Did I not give you the floor? Deputy seat. Clerk, you out of order. I won't respect Deputy Clerk, you don't respect. Deputy Clerk, you're out of order. And that's your problem. People need to learn to stay in their place. Like I gave you the floor, I was quiet. I let you say whatever you want to say. Now you listen to what I got to say. Stop being disrespectful. Stop lying to the people about what it is you in your office should be doing. You're a clerk key. Period. Y'all need to come to work. Y'all are never here. Y'all need to do what you're supposed to do, which is have the minutes ready and make sure you review them. And if you guys would give us the minutes so we can review them before so we can go and say, hey, add this, change that. And I said it's at the last meeting. And your job is to record what I'm saying. And if I say for the record, that means that you need to type what I'm saying. So won't you learn your position? Stop trying to clap at me. So we moving on. Next, village. May I, may I have a motion to suspend the rule. Okay. 
We going to move on. We second, got village got, administrator got a report. In a second on the suspend the rules. We're going to move on to the reports. Attorney, we have a motion. Why? Second. Why do you want to suspend? Aye. Why do you want to suspend the? Uh, why? What are you doing? Been... I didn't say call the roll. Y'all are out of order. Y'all are out of order. Y'all out of order. Y'all out of order. Myself and other board members. And I just asked comments. you a question, so deputy clerk, you out of order. There's so why do you want to? Second. Why do you want to so suspend the rules? We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Uh, I would trustee, why do you want to suspend the rules? You have reports to do. Comments, I, I'm general comments vote. have not been addressed. Myself That's and wrong. other board members, I believe, have comments to many of the allegations stated. So I'm asking either for general comments or suspend the rules. Trustee, we're gonna get to everybody on here right now. We are on clerk. She's done. We are on village administrator now, and we will get to you guys to speak My everyone's going to be allowed to there's speak a motion and a second to suspend the rules i will ask the attorney what, 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 to follow and the attorney said what rule i said a motion and a second to suspend the normal order of business to suspend the agenda so you want to take is, is your motion to take the agenda out of order uh, he don't even know the, he don't even know suspend the agenda so that the board members can comment you got everybody going to get the opportunity to speak but the agenda announcements is on a Next. Even if it was next or whatever, everybody okay, gonna get to so speak. So what is the problem? problem? And it's the problem we got, cause y'all can't have y'all way. The whole hour. Everybody, so what? So what? Shouldn't walk out last time. Can so you wait till we get to? Can you wait till we get to it? Passed on the agenda. Okay, but Fantastic. we would get to it. We would get to. I don't to know why you're so afraid of other people speaking. Man. I'm not. <laughs> I'm never afraid of y'all at all. Get that correct. Please okay. clear that up. So Never we can, at all. So then what I'm forward. asking, trustee, is why are we suspending rules if we're going over the agenda? We're wasting five more minutes. We are by you line. doing what you're doing. So let me finish so everyone Aye. will have the opportunity to speak. So, again, uh, clerk, you out of order. You out of order. Don't call the row. Is the motion to speak? Go ahead. You know, you need to chill out. Turn around. Turn around. Girl, back. Go on with all the nutball stuff. Can we have order, please? Order, please, or you'll be escorted out of the meeting. Is the attorney going to suspend a motion or what? Is the attorney going to say something or no? We wait. We got a whole second and a motion on the table. I understand it. Talk. Okay. All right. She said, go ahead. Thank you. So I start again. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. No. Trustee Howe. Please don't be disrespectful to, to people. Don't do that. Trustee Holmes. No. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you. I, I'll be brief with my comments, but I, I will say um, something that served me many, <clears throat> many years has been anytime somebody speaks that fast, watch your wallet. And that's what's going on here now. There's a lot of comments, a lot of statements that are being kind of hurled out there to defend something that when there was a media reporter, they're asking for a stance and there was no stance given to that same reporter. This is not information that the board made up and <coughs> provided. That information was given out. Residents, I will say again, this deficit is real. We have troubles. Watch your wallet when people are talking that fast. That concludes my comments. May, I, right, be next. May I be recognized? Go ahead. Um, I just want to address a few things that was uh, stated this tonight in your mayor's report. Um, I'm not asking for feedback. I just want to make a statement. Um, first off, you posted a the CBA, the contract for the police, but you only posted a part of it. In that contract, because I read, it states that the protective detail is straight time, meaning that every shift, it should be somebody, not extensive overtime that's being clocked to the taxpayers. And it has been the norm that they don't cash out more than 40 hours per week every two weeks for comp time. So to get 300 hours, even if they did over 80 hours or whatever, that's more than the norm, especially when we're having financial difficulties. Second, you said something about the business license. 
Um, I'm not, and you definitely always include me in everything. I'm not opposed to your decision of business license. What I'm opposed to, if this was the direction that you were going for the village, these are people's business. It should have been a letter six to nine months saying that we're looking to go in a new direction for the village. Don't wait until it's time for them to renew their license and leave them on this spinning journey of just hanging and not telling them what you're trying to do. So when you get up here and say, we're doing this and it's our friends and all that, that is not the goal. My thing is that if you do have the ability and the whiff to say that I don't want 40 license in town, that's your decision because you're the liquor commissioner. But to uproot these people livelihoods after 20, 30 years, that's what I have a problem with. And you keep saying my friend bringing a strip club, which I don't know who my friend is. Um, but the same friend or whatever that you keep saying I have, this 300 Sibley redevelopment plan that you so into pushing restaurant row wants nine license, liquor license, and an entertainment venue, which you're not saying, and then asking us to give him $3.5 million to do it. So when we start talking about stuff, like you always say, you have your turn to say something, we have our, look at the facts. Everything that's documented because you highlighted only certain stuff, ask for you a copy of the collective bargaining agreement, for you the copy of the ordinance of the business license, for you the copy of the redevelopment plan and the things that we're going through. This is not to sit up here and to attack nobody. And it's a shame that we get here and y'all just say, here, we've been here an hour and no, two hours and 15 minutes. An hour, she just talked about everything that somebody attacking her or doing. It's not about attacking nobody. It's about communicating. She don't communicate with us. That's the truth. Yes, we ain't gonna kumbaya or nothing, but it's it's a, a respect level. And we sit up here and disrespect one another because you only give what somebody is giving to you. My mother is not sitting on that dais. And it's not fair that she sits here and talk to us like we're kids. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. Then she says, we voted against the gas leak, a lie. Voted against cameras and the police, a lie. All these things to try to demean all the stuff that's going on. I said, and she said, we don't research. Research. We looking at the um, warrant list. $6,426 on a logo for a skating rink. Who do that? Not approved. We sit here. It's been over a million dollars for this Greenwood things. Not budgeted. All these grants. No receipts of payments deposited into the bank. And then it's always they doing this. I grew here. They flew here. All this stuff. It makes no sense. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to the residents. And it makes no sense that we can't come and continue to do business and get up out of here. We spend in four, roughly between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars every month or every other month on tree trimming. It makes no sense. It's not budgeted anywhere. It's not about beautification. If you're going to cut the trees, cut the dead trees, trim the trees. But you making this a project of beauty just to be like, they said no. They said no. It's not fair to us. I'm a taxpayer. I've been here almost 20 years. So that grew here, flew here. I'm just invested as you are. And it's not fair that the decisions that you're making are on the backs of the residents. I release. All right. And yeah, just so you know. I said I asked second. for no comment. You, girl, you can't tell me what to do. So no. for that, no. y'all didn't budget for y'all attorney, right? But he charging all this money, this $2 million stuff, right? But you keep saying stuff not budgeted. So when y'all going to put the residents in the budget? But y'all keep budgeting for everything else but the people. So if you're going to state the facts, state the facts. All you did was make statements and no facts to nothing that you're talking about. 300 West Sibley. They tried to take that man property. He won in court. This was under rally administration. Jason House knows. But y'all ain't fighting for that though, right? Y'all ain't fighting to make people whole and make things right. Then you tell the person, come with a better plan. He come with a better plan, say 10 sit-down restaurant. And he didn't ask for no nine liquor license. 
that everybody know that I ain't giving out because that ain't my thing. Everybody know that about me. I'm about family. I just told you we got over 40 places. So why would I want to add more? But people just be talking up here. Go ahead, trustee. Thank you. Good evening, residents. Um, let's, let's do a happy Monday, right? Sir, please keep it down. Um, happy Monday. There's an African proverb that says, if you want to go far, go alone. If you want to if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Our job is to legislate. Do they allow us to add items to the agenda? No. So that's why you see us having special meetings. As true. long as there are four trustees, then we have a quorum. So we technically have a legal meeting. We talk about facts. What do we know? We all know that we've only had one meeting a month when we're supposed to have two. The first meeting is because there's supposed to be a cow meeting for a discussion where we as a board ask questions so the residents can have the answers at that time. This is not about us at the moment. This is about your tax dollars as well. This is the meeting where RFPs are supposed to be presented. I keep saying we're spending all of this money on all of this work. Where are the contracts and where are the RFPs? You don't see them. Why? Because all last seven cow meetings have been canceled. We don't know that how without RFPs, how do we know that we're getting the best bang for our buck? No one. We all homeowners here will get work done to our home. Who simply just tells one person to do the job? Typically, a person has four and five quotes, but not with us. She assigns four and five different people to do jobs and then say, hey, surprise, surprise, trustees. Here's the warrant list. Here's a million dollars. Don't say anything. Don't ask any questions. Just approve it. Police detail. As I stated before, I'm not against you having police detail. But for how long and how often was the question? One million dollars in police overtime to protect you when we have residents flooding. This village consists of 60% women with children. We all need protection, last time I checked. Where are the grants? She said, sat here and did a whole slash show. But did you all see the grants, the money coming in? They could have added that. Greenwood, Greenwood cost us a million dollars. It get, it looks good, but what about the people that's flooded? What's a skating ring to people who have death feces in their home in the basement? What's more important? We have infrastructure issues where our priorities and we have our priorities are not with spending. They're not prioritizing with our spending. Taxes are increasing and all you have to have to show for it is a skating rink. Ask your mayor, since we're talking about working together to have the two meetings that we're supposed to. Let's have the cow meeting where there's RFPs presented so we all know who's doing the work and how much the work is costing us. We're $5 million in a deficit. And that's why we're here. Checks and balances. This board is about checks and balances. This is what we're fighting for. Transparency. So on a lighter note, we're having an all about real estate seminar. Where our, we, our very own Cook County Assessor will help you appeal your taxes. <coughs> Wednesday, October 25th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at 14700 Evers in Dalton Park inside the Lester Loan Building. For all of the people who missed the first deadline to appeal their taxes, because we know they're increasing, right? Make sure you're here. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at uh, 708-968-4297 or feel free to email me at bnorwood at villageadalton.org. Thank you, all, everyone. All right. So go ahead. Back to the good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I hope Ed Steve is still here. <laughs> I just like to say uh, there's going to be a fair coming up October 14th. It says, from fear to free, united for women's safety. And I'm looking at the fly and uh, my counterpart right here, Brittany Woods, you're on there. And you're talking about united for safety for women. And this is just going back and forth. This is totally unfair. Uh, you guys keep throwing out there, Greenwood Falls. Like that's the only thing that's been built. There's more things been done out here in Dalton instead of just Greenwood Fall. Like, like, like. Yep. Like tell us. Like we got sidewalks out there because I deal with a lot of seniors, and we're looking at seniors got their sidewalks done in front of their homes, 
And it's not anymore that uh, we got bumpy sidewalks. If a person's in a wheelchair, they can go down the streets. We got trees just falling on individual houses and roofs. If you guys were out there, you can actually see these things. This is some real stuff. So it has to be money being spent. In order to run a village, you're going to have to get bonds. You're going to have to get loans. We're not making enough money to pay the police department and the fire department and public works. Those are some expensive entities that we have to pay for to run a village. So we can give out tickets and code enforcers and give out citations. That's still not enough money. We had to get some bonds. We had to borrow some money. That's automatic to run a village. Every village around is doing that. From Calumet City to beautiful South Holland, they're getting bonds. They're borrowing money. But I hear you other trustees, and I'm not picking sides, but I'm just looking at what we're going to do, just keep fighting, keep fighting and get nothing done. It's unfair to say the mayor is just spending money. Where? Where is she putting the money at? Not in her pocket. It's going out here to the residents. Yeah, we all stakeholders out here. But just look around. If you've been riding around Dalton, you can definitely see some improvements. Go from 146 in Indiana all the way over to Maple. The whole street been paid. I have went down some alleys, alleys paid. My alley look like Vietnam. Potholes and everything. But there are some other residents that's getting alleys put together. For my 33 years out here, I've never seen an alley getting paid. They had the 50-50 program. Yeah, we was jumping up hallelujah for 50-50 program. Right now, we're talking about zero to the residents. Yeah, there's grants being put out here, and there's some more grants still sitting on the table to be actually utilized. But let's get what we can get now. Because all it looks like it's going to be is just a fight from here on out till we get to election time. That's unfair to the residents. We fighting right now when we should be putting that money where it should be utilized at and continue uh, taking care of residents. Cause it's gonna, we're gonna have a deficit. You have to spend money. You got to spend money to run a village. Nowhere in the world you can, at the end of the year, you are gonna bank out with an even balance. It's gonna be money old, but as long as you can show something for it. So what we gonna do, just keep fighting? That's what it is. Yeah, I see a power struggle right here. And it's total disrespectful. Total disrespectful. We're looking at a strong black on black, left and right. And every week we're getting over 200 people coming from another country coming here. And we're here fighting amongst ourselves when we got a chance to do something for ourselves. We just steady tearing each other down. A lot of us come here and I hope, Ed, Steve, you hear you took the time out your day as a black man to come talk about another black man. These numbers can be read very easily, very easily. But it just hurts to read these numbers when you, Ed, Steve, filed a lawsuit against the village for $50,000. Be transparent, Ed, Steve. That's all I hear out your mouth, transparent. But did you tell these taxpaying residents that you put a lawsuit against the village? Did you tell them that? You and some other individuals around here got a lawsuit against the village? You want to talk about deficit? I don't know how much you got, but I believe it's somewhere over 50,000. That's, yeah, that's deficit. We got some lawsuits on here, unnecessary lawsuits. I just got on this board back in February and I got to make decisions on this board that's been here just piling bills up. Yeah, I started reading the, the uh, finance report hoping I can bring some calmness to when these numbers get read. Because every time they get read, Jason was running, reading the number. Yeah, he was the president of U.S. Bank. I don't know how well he did at the bank, but he read the numbers off, and as soon as we, we read the numbers off, the fight start. We're here for two, three hours talking about the bills. Reading these numbers, I'm just reading the numbers. We all had to vote. So we, we find a lot of time just to talk and knock each other. Very unnecessary. We're the clown show of the Southland area. Everybody laugh at us because they know we getting ready to go in here. We're going to say prayers. We're going to pray us in. We're going to fight our way out. We don't hesitate with that. Give us What's wrong with giving her a chance? Take her face off of it and look at the things that she's trying to do. 
come on, women. The women move is on. I support women. I got a mama, auntie, wife, daughter, granddaughter. I don't have a problem with women. They take care of business. Us men, we work hard and they take care of business. But we as people, I don't care if you black, white, green, or red, we don't need Come on, y'all. Let's take care of our town. We beating our town up. We get to come up here and talk about each other and people clapping and yeah, yeah, you know, okay, who got the most clap? If I wanted to, if I work hard enough, I can get a crowd of people up here because I know I can be, be a lot for a lot of people. I can bring some people up here to clap and I'll clap a lot of people up in here. I don't even waste that time to do that. But you know what you can do? Election time. Vote in people, vote people out. Ed yeah. Steve, people showed you how they felt about you. Huh. Come on, Ed Steve. If they wanted somebody to always say transparency every time there's a meeting, you would have been here, Ed Steve. Mm -hmm. But you took the time out your day to come up here and knock the board members that's trying to do something. Huh. And I feel slighted, very slighted. These meetings you guys having at a nonpartisan park district where you shouldn't be doing nothing uh, political there. I didn't even get invitation. Never said, hey, Stan, stop by the meeting. You know, hear what we got to say. We don't get to say what we want to say at, at the village hall. Come on by here and hear what we have to say. But you don't give anybody any room to make a decision. Just as you're doing the mayor, you got her back against the wall. What do you expect her to do? Give us some room. Give her a little room in the back so she can wiggle out and say, okay, we can sit down and come to a happy medium. But you guys are not giving no room to get to the happy medium because it's just fight, 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 fight. So we're going to fight to election time. And yeah, the residents going to speak. But I say to you residents, pay attention to who you're electing in there because they can talk smart at the meetings, but can they do something? Are they going to move the rock? Because right now, it's some residents, you're getting some good stuff. I didn't see windows and roofs go up. Sidewalks, trees trim. People getting fed. Yeah, we need a little action out here. Yeah, I, I was at the roller rink the other day. It was awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's a money revenue right there. That's going to bring some kind of dollars in. Yeah, we had to spend money to, to put it up, but we're going to get a chance to get a few dollars back. Give it a chance. But I just say this here to you, my fellow board members, what are we doing as a whole to help bring some? Let's get on board. If she gonna get out there and go hustle that money up, let her hustle up, bring it on back and let's spend it. Let's spend that money. What are we gonna try and save all the money all the way through the end of the year and don't have nothing? <coughs> we need to check ourselves out because uh, we're not doing a good job as a board with all this fuss and fight going back and forth. Yeah, the meeting is long. I can understand that because there's a lot of garbage been going out there about individuals and there's nothing wrong with wanting to get the air clean. And that's what she's doing. It's a long way from being a yes board and a puppet. It's not even that. I feel if she was saying something that I didn't like, I had no problem saying nothing to her. But we at the point, we don't even talk to each other. I used to have conversations with some of my board members. We don't talk no more only when we come here. And I got attitude about that. Yeah, I bring you peppermint and all that. Yeah. You ask me to get, get, get one of your seniors grass cut, I go over there and get your grass cut for them. Come on. We some real life enemies with one another. We shouldn't be like that. So I'm going to close it out because I'm getting on my soapbox and we've been very unfair to one another. Very unfair. Thank you. Uh, no, just go into the next thing. Just All right. Village administrator's report. May I be recognized? Yep, go ahead, trustee. Thank you, Stan, for uh, standing up on it. I'm standing with you on that because you know what? Um, it's black on black, and that's what it is, and it needs to stop. I mean, we have legislators outside of us being trustees that don't even want to work and support the mayor. I mean, you. this is your district, this is your area. Those of you that are in Springfield need to turn around and start working and putting the money into the village of Dalton. You see what's happening here, but you know what? I, I can say one thing. Thank you 
mayor for keeping the saws going. Thank you for keeping the concrete poured out here. Thank you for doing what you're doing. You know, it takes all of us to do this and we need to turn the other cheek and start working together because the only way we gonna build up this village is to work together. And it's a shame that as a female, you can see the changes that have been done from previous administration. I, I don't worry and look back on what they didn't uh, or didn't do or should have did, but it's getting done now. Look at how much work is getting done now that you ain't seen in 20 and 30 years. That's what you need to be talking about. You know, when you plant that seed, just keep growing and keep growing because sooner or later, those who have not prepared themselves to help this village, to help the seniors, to help the kids, then your time shall come to an end. I'm done. All right. Thank you. Um, next, we got village administrative report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, trustee Stan Brown, Trustee Andrew Holmes, Rescue Trustees. Um, uh, trustee Stan Brown, Trustee Andrew Holmes, that's, that's tough to follow. So uh, yeah, thanks guys. Um, I wanna address uh, a couple of things real quick. Let's talk about, <clears throat> uh, I had a list of grants that we were, um, that we are approved for but in light of the um, accusation that for whatever reason, there aren't quote unquote real grants, um, I will go ahead and I will give you the grant number so people can understand that these are real grants that the mayor has done a great job of going to Springfield and procuring. Uh, these are all from DCEO and this is real money. This is not fake money. Um, so uh, first one is, Item number DG240126, it's for the village of Dalton. It's $1 million for operating expenses. Uh, let me say that again, that's $1 million for operating expenses, guys. Yep. SD200017, village of Dalton. It is $200,000 for infrastructure improvements. Again, that's SD200017. SD 20018 Village Dalton 100k that's for new fire hydrants ladies and gentlemen that's $100,000 for fire hydrants and that's HD the last one is HD 220145 Village of Dalton that's $112,500 for capital improvement so the idea that she isn't working and acquiring grants not making excuses and doing her job is absolutely ridiculous. She does an amazing job and she works with people all day long when everyone else is asleep. I applaud her for her efforts and uh, I wish I could work as hard as she does, but I can't. And that's being honest with you guys. I think that everyone owes her a round of applause and a debt of gratitude because she works incredibly hard as your public servant. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have a serious problem to fix, which is the appropriation budget that was passed at uh, the special meeting, uh, the mayor calls them secret squirrel meetings, I agree with her. Um, it was not presented in the uh, in a proper manner. And because of that, oh yeah, I, yeah I, just, I said it the way I said it for a reason, uh, legally. Um, so it wasn't presented and or passed uh, legally. Um, there were steps that were missed by our legislative body. Um, and so we will represent a new the same budget, but a new budget to you, the public, and we will have a public hearing, which is what you're supposed to have. We will have a public hearing. We will release it to the public. We will allow for you guys to have questions. We will answer your questions, and then we will represent it to the board for passage like it's supposed to be done. We will also contact Cook County and let them know that a circuit squirrel meeting was held and that they should not accept this fake pass budget that was given. So. That is our next step. The next thing we're working on is your water issues. Thank you for everyone who has been patient with our water department. My water supervisor is not here to answer your questions, but if you have any questions, please stop by and I'll help you with your water issues and I will connect you with the right person. Again, thank you, Mayor. I know this is a challenging time. We're dealing with water issues. If you've had a water issue, please stop by and talk to me before you leave. Uh, we will be working on digital meters and we will present the water meter plan to the board 
even though it's already passed by the IEPA, and we will do our due diligence, like Ed Steves. Steve said, um, excuse me, is it Steves or Steve? <laughs> Steves? Um, transparency is one of the things that we focus on here in the administration. I appreciate everyone's support. I want to thank everyone that helps me in my administration. You guys do an incredible job. I know it's a thankless job. I'm saying thank you because I appreciate you. Mayor, that will end my report. All right, thank you. Next, we have the engineer's report. Thank you this evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Clerk, trustees, department heads, and residents from the village of Dalton. Um, just want to give uh, a bit of a breakdown of what we have been working on, the projects um, I will run off. These are grant projects that are funded by either Motor Fuel Tax, Rebuild Illinois, DCO Grant, EPA, or Cook County. Um, right now, um, the Illinois Department of Transportation is conducting a phase one study to do roadway improvements on 142nd. And as part of that study, we'll make sure that we address um, some of the issues coming off of the ramp uh, where uh, vehicles have been uh, running into homes. Also, the Illinois Department of Transportation is supposed to be doing Cottage Grove from Sibley Boulevard to 154th Street. So these are roadways that are owned by the state and the state has jurisdiction and the state will be paying for these projects 100 percent also mwrd has a one million dollar sewer project on the east side and a three hundred thousand dollar project on the west side mwrd will design bid these projects award them and construct them and we will all be kept into loop in the loop of uh where these projects at um, right now, we're working on a 2022 CDBG D street resurfacing and alley resurfacing project. So that's what we're currently working on. Also, we received a $600,000 grant from Cook County. Right now, we are building a new water main, 16 inch, right behind Old Village Hall. So that project is currently in construction. That project was bidded out following all the rules and regulations and procurement procedures uh, were followed uh, per Cook County. Um, in the last three years, we have done a sidewalk project for 300,000, street resurfacing MFT rebuild 700,000, alley resurfacing through MFT for 800,000, 2021 CDBG for 300, quiet zone study for 130,000, 144th Street resurfacing surface transportation project for 400,000, 154th Street, that is a joint project between the village of Dalton and South Holland. It will be a cost sharing, but the grant is for $1.7 million, and that comes through CMAP. Uh, we have a lead service inventory project that's $80,000 that comes from the IEPA. And also, we applied for funding for uh, OSLED grant last year for $600. We didn't get it. We applied for 2023 CDBG funding and invest in Cook. We didn't get it but we, were, we got the 600,000 for the water main replacement project. So that ends my report this okay. evening and I will entertain But I just want to point something out. Uh, we didn't get it because the board didn't vote for the 600,000. We, we kept putting it up, kept putting it up for the water park. So well, we, applied put that for, we applied for the grant, but we did not submit a resolution which was required. Right, which the board has to pass. So I wanted to make sure people understand that way but thank you so much for all you do run because um we are out here working and i like residents to hear from the engineer company um who does what and that we actually do or as nor would always say put out an rfp for things just because she don't see it she don't think we do do that so we do do that i love the work that y'all doing i like the fact that we go get the money we bring it back to our communities and we're doing all these different projects i just need the people to always know that it's gonna get fixed it's just over time because it's been so broken for years that it's gonna take time to rebuild everything thank you we have we definitely appreciate the uh, opportunity yep Thank you. Also, we have another, we have an item on the agenda too. Uh, I'll just go into small detail about that. That's the IDOT resolution for maintenance under highways. Mm -hmm. um, that's administrative work. That's just um, kind of a spreadsheet that outlines we, uh, the village receives motor fuel tax from the sale of gasoline. 
So as part of motor fuel tax, the village uses those funding for the maintenance of roads. So that funding is for to buy bulk rock salt uh, for the streets, to buy hot and cold patch to, to patch uh, the potholes, uh, for traffic signal maintenance, uh, also for the pay for electricity for lighting, uh, so forth and so on. So that's kind of the breakdown of the uh, the two uh, items that are on the uh, agenda for this evening for passage. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we have department reports. Uh, Chief Collins, police. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening to everyone. I'm gonna read just a handful of stats and then I'm gonna make a few statements that's gonna add a little bit of clarity and some other side to some very important issues that we've already been talking about. So that way people get a better understanding of what does take place behind the scenes. September 2023 statistics, there were 49 traffic citations issued, 592 village ordinance citations issued, 12 arrests, and 1,816 calls for service. Calls for service year to date are 15,421. Uh, the news that coverage on the security detail uh, made it seem like the mayor has multiple police officers around here at all times, which is not the case. The list of names that you saw flash across the TV screen were officers who occasionally are on the detail. Yes, she does have a, an officer or two with her uh, when she's out and about, but also those officers have to have days off. So they get filled in with other officers who do work the detail when there are openings on that detail. Now, referring back to the patrolman's collective bargaining agreement, officers are paid overtime for working above and beyond their normal 40 hours a week. Their 80 hours per pay period are their normal hours. But according to that collective bargain agreement, officers are allowed to accumulate time instead of taking it in money, they can take it in time and bank that time. And their collective bargain agreement allows them to cash out that time at any time they want. There's no restrictions on it. However, the CBA does say that they have a maximum of 250 hours that they can bank and they have to cash it out at before the end of the year comes. So it doesn't say they can only cash out a certain amount. They can cash out what they have banked. There's no restrictions. On that particular day, the news reported about a uh, uh, what seemed to be an extra large paycheck. That officer did do the regular hours, he did overtime hours, and he did cash in what he had in his, uh, in his time bank. So by appearances, it looked as if he had worked 303 hours when the reality is he did not work those hours. And that is public information that can be researched if you dig a little bit deeper, ask the right questions on a FOIA and you can get those answers. As it regards to overtime, Overtime in the police department is unavoidable. Many conditions exist in which overtime is a necessity. Officers get injured, such as today, when the officer uh, was involved in that, that crash. She was hit so hard that it flipped the squad car over. We are lucky that she was carried away in an ambulance instead of carried to the morgue. Officers get sick. They catch COVID from continuous contact with people on the street. And they are also entitled to take vacations and use personal time. They're required to make court appearances even on their days off. We also require officers to attend training. Emergencies occur such as the flood where we have to call officers in off duty to come in and assist. So overtime will continue to exist as long as we have those type of situations. We have serious crimes that occur that need the appearance of multiple officers. Officers have been called into work. Even if the department was fully staffed, overtime would still occur. Overtime is unpredictable and unavoidable just by the very nature of this business. I would invite all decision makers to enter into a conversation about properly budgeting for these premium salaries so that the village can be adequately protected. Now, I wanna talk about recruiting for just a second. Recruiting has been extremely difficult and near impossible these days. It is also a tough task to retain officers. In other words, how do we keep them here? Other municipalities offer more money and bonuses to sign on. Officers also have family members to provide for, 
To the officer, it's probably an easy decision to leave an atmosphere of constant criticism and relentless scrutiny and go to a department that pays more. These officers are overworked, overworked because of the lack of recruits to replace the ones that leave. And I'm just going to give you a, just a real quick, I did a study a few years ago comparing the size, the rate of crime, the amount of crime, the type of crime that happens in Dalton to a district in Chicago. Same size, land mass, it's roughly about the same amount of people, same type of crime, same frequency of crime. For that one particular district, they have 358 police officers to throw at their problems. Here in Dalton, we have 43. Now imagine the amount of work that these officers have to do while they're out there on the streets. Now they get criticized for what they do out there, but they do a good job. And I'm gonna back these officers up when they do these good jobs. They leave their homes every day. They put on that badge, they strap on armor, armor, and they go out there on the street and put their lives on the line for people that they don't even know. Now, who else does that? Who else does that? That they will step out there and put themselves in danger. Now, all of us that wear these uniforms, we have friends who didn't have a chance to go home after their shift. We have friends who've taken their lives because of the stress because of this job. So I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I will back these officers when they're in the right. They will be held accountable if they're in the wrong. But it's time to support our police officers because the village of Dalton has very good police officers, very good police officers. And you should be proud of the work that they do. Now, I want to talk about enforcement and also fire lanes for just a moment. Despite the many conversations, the press coverage, and the many citations issued, people are still parking in the fire lanes. Still to this day, even though so much coverage has gone on about this. And Chief McCain, he's gonna to speak to that in a, in, a, in a few minutes about why it's important to keep those fire lanes clean. But I wanna make also one thing perfectly clear, we will continue to enforce these laws. I get phone calls from people, I get emails, people come to the police station, they catch me after the board meetings asking for enforcement. Well, here it is, the enforcement is here. We can't have it both ways. So people who complain about getting these tickets, there's one surefire way to keep from getting a fire lane ticket. That's not to park in the fire lane. Park somewhere else. We're gonna continue to issue traffic tickets, we're gonna continue to make arrests, and it's going to and these people that who get arrested and the people who get the tickets, yeah, you're going to be upset, but we're going to continue the enforcement. That's one thing, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good evening, Mayor, Board of Trustees, residents of Dalton. I'm also going to echo the same passion and sentiments that Chief Collins has for his department that I have my, for mine as well. Um, in regards to the fire lanes, it is so important to make sure the fire lanes are clear because vehicle placement is such an important factor for us at the in the event of an incident. Uh, those who have seen fire scenes, like we just had one at 149 in Edbrook, it's so important to make sure that we, that we have the available space to have our fire engines as well as the outside communities coming in because every vehicle has a specific placement for us to mitigate that incident. So please, I know it's 30 seconds. I know it's two minutes. I'm just running in to get a pizza. I get it. But that 30 seconds or two minutes could really hamper our efforts in order to save lives and property. So please listen to what the chief's saying. I need you guys to do it as well. God forbid it's your house or your business and someone's parking there. So please stay clear of the fire lane so we can do our job so we can take care of our residents. Dalton Fire Department. So in 2021, when I was privileged to have the opportunity to come back and be the fire chief. Uh, we strategically planned and invested resources in areas such as personnel, training. Training is huge for us. Infrastructure, technology, community engagement, emergency services, all to meet the demands of this community. We're also short with manpower. We're also trying to come up with ways to make sure we can get the financing and the funding to meet the needs of the community. Uh, enhancing EMS services. We have a wonderful relationship with Bud's Ambulance. 
we understand the importance of having buds in this community as our firefighters are also EMTs and paramedics and we work with them to make sure that there's at least four people on the scene of a medical call in our community. So that way, instead of having just two people on the scene like some communities have, we have at least four, sometimes five, to be able to help your loved ones in the event of an emergency. So when that ambulance goes transport to the hospital, our fire crews, again, who are EMTs and paramedics, they're ready for the next call until that ambulance arrives. So we work side by side and we couldn't do it without them. So we have a great relationship and part of, part of our vision was enhancing those relationships. Implementing revenue generating ideas. So in 2021, we, we uh, worked with the fire response billing that's to recoup a portion of the costs. I know some people get upset about it. It's similar to ambulance billing or receiving tickets from the police department, but we have to recoup costs for emergency responses. The taxes don't cover all that. So we need to be able to recoup the cost so we can work on being able to uh, fund critical projects, get the training we need, buy equipment, things like that. Updating our reporting software. We updated our reporting software to the ESO. The ESO system allows us to have have everything in place so it does payroll, it does uh, hydrant uh, testing analysis, it allows us to be able to bill correctly. Vector Target Solutions, the other program we bought, so if, if OSHA or IDOL comes in and wants to check our records, we have our training records because not only are we um, governed by Office of State Fire Marshal, OSHA, IDOL, ISO, we have a lot of regulatory agencies to make sure we're up to speed with the training. There's a lot of training with the fire service. Implementing community oriented projects. We're out there at all the events, not only at the schools, but it's important for us to give back to the community and for the kids, all right, it's for the youth. We want to make sure that we're visible, we're out there. At some of the events, that, you know, they're playing with the hose lines. They're, they're, they're playing with the foam out there. They're being able to touch the fire truck. They're being able to see what the firemen are so that way when they call 911, they know who we are. So not only are we're out there at their worst time, we're there at their best time so they can get familiar with us. It's so important. Uh, implementing the EMA ESDA program, we brought that back. It oversees the village events, having extra manpower out there for the village events, as well as the warming centers and the cooling centers. They assist the village administration as well as the public safety departments with whatever we need out there. Fire hydrant testing. Um, fire hydrant testing repair, as Ron Smith said, we had a grant to repair hydrants. That list is passed on to Superintendent Correll. He works with Ron Smith. We get the fire hydrants fixed that are in our target hazards and in our residential areas as well. So having this grant available will allow us to get the hydrants that we've tested so far fixed. So in the meantime, though, we do have water, all right? We're never without water. Our fire engines do carry 750 gallons of water, plus we have other communities coming to assist us as well. So we do have water. And most of the time, we are able to knock the fire with uh, 750 to 1,500 gallons of water, which we supply with our two fire engines. Calendar year 2022. We hired two new firefighters. We're going to have to hire more because people have left. We renovated and reopened fire station number two. That was huge for us for response times to take care of the south and west side of our community. We purchased a new fire engine, state-of-the-art fire engine. We had two vehicles that were hit in a car accident right off the Bishop Ford. So having the proper vehicles and having the mindset to know that we need to improve and take care of our residents, the vision is there. We appreciate that vision. Qualified and certified firefighters, we need that. Community involvement, recruitment, giving back to the community. The Thornton Township Public Safety Career Initiative executed that program for us. We had 12 individuals that completed EMT school and are going through the fire academy, as well as 429 students from Thorn Ridge and Thorn High School completed CPR training, AED training, and stop the bleed training. These students are from the Southland. They're from Dalton. They're from Harvey. They're from Kell City. They're from South Holland. They're from our neighbors, all right? It's part of my job as the fire chief to give back to the community. I know that we have to help get folks from our community these jobs, all right? This community has given me the opportunity to provide for my family. I need to make sure the training and opportunities are out for our residents so they can provide for theirs. Although we've hired five firefighters in the last couple of years, we're, we have also, by November, we have also lost five. We have two individuals going out on medical. We had one person that did not pass probation. We had one person pass away and one person who took another job opportunity out at a western suburb. Like the chief said, 
it's hard to, to maintain and retain employees because although it may not seem to you guys out in the audience, as far as our salaries, the Dalton Fire Department is one of the lower salaries in the South Side. So it's hard to compete. We had an individual who we were processing off our list. He chose to take a pass because he couldn't take the pay cut. So with that being said, we are working on numerous ways to come up with outside the box ideas to create revenue so we can not only hire, educate, compensate and retain new firefighters um, on the docket tonight for the board um, is a is a hazmat imp impact fee registry ordinance with that being said the concept for this ordinance aims to have first responders in our community police fire public works the administration everybody be aware of all the hazardous materials that are coming through our community to the best of our ability and to buy the equipment to help us mitigate it but having the funding mechanism in place by knowing this and having a funding mechanism, our intent is to hire, educate, compensate, and retain new firefighters for the Village of Dalton Fire Department. In addition to having these outside the box funding mechanism, I'm also working on legislation at a state and federal level to help public safety for communities that are down on their luck and need financial assistance. We need it in the South Side because it's hard for us to compete with some of the other northern and western suburbs as well as the city of Chicago. They take all our employees because they, you know, frankly, they pay more. Fire inspectional services has been revised to work collectively with the Village of Dalton inspectional services. So our fire inspector, our team out there, we're working with the village so that way if there's a public safety issue, we're able to mitigate it and get on top of it. So I'm tired. I know a lot of us are tired. We're working diligently. Um, we have a crew, all right? We're short staff, but we have a crew. The men of the Dalton firemen, they're awesome. They're a football team. They're ready to rock, all right? They are highly trained. Thank you. They are fantastic. And like Chief Collins said, I would do anything for them. I'd put them up against the city of Chicago because our minimum staffing is at four. We have 16 people right now. I'm sorry, as of November, but we only have 16 people are able to function right now be, be, between disability and injury. And these guys, they come to work. They're without time with their family. Sometimes they're here three or four days in a row. Why? They love it. Yeah, they're getting compensated. Don't get me wrong. However, knowing firsthand, working 96 hours straight in a fire department, it gets a little exhausting because you're running 10 to 20 calls a day. You're out there, and it gets a little exhausting. So it's important that we remember what these guys sacrifice and what we all sacrifice. And Mayor Hender, thank you for the opportunity to serve this village. I am proud to be the fire chief, and I'm proud to keep working diligently for the residents as we come up with outside the box ideas to take care of the community and take care of our public safety personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Public Works, Stacey Carr. Thank you, Mary. Good evening, everyone. Um, normally I would give this boring report of stats, but I'm gonna do something a little different tonight. Uh, I've heard a few things over the last few board meetings. I'm starting to hear this word infrastructure out of certain board members. Um, I'm hearing a lot of words like infrastructure and vendor and, and services. Uh, but what really irritates me as a superintendent of this community is that there are board members here that choose to shoot down bills uh, that I render service to this community for. And this is very, very irritating. There are members of this body that have not reached out to me not one time to ask me what are the needs of this community uh, as it relates to infrastructure. And I find that very irritating to me. I come here every day. I work over my eight hours a day, over. Sometimes I'm here at night. The wind could blow and the pump house could cut off. I'm here way more than people know. So when we come to these meetings and people pull bills, they pull vendors, they pick on people, they say certain things that aren't accurate without getting the facts. It really grinds my gears. And normally I don't even get into this, but I'm going to get into it tonight because I'm the face of, of some of this, uh, some of these bills that are being pulled. That's the face of my department uh, services that we give out um, as it relates to our water system. Our water system is outdated. We've known this for some time. Two, three administrations have known this prior to this administration. Nothing has been done. I'm a young black man who is a superintendent of a South Suburban community who has to watch a water system fail every other day while people come to a meeting and argue about nothing. It's very dishonoring for me 
giving a service to this community, not knowing that if the bills will be paid on time or certain vendors will be paid in a certain manner to where I can make sure these people have water when they wake up in the morning to wash their face, to make a meal or to get their kids ready for school is very irritating. And uh, I need to express my frustrations tonight instead of just give a regular boring uh, report as I usually do because people need to know exactly who this is affecting. It's not just affecting the mayor by bothering these vendors or, or, or whatever political antics. I'm not an elected official. I'm here to do a job. And when I come here to do my job, I expect the tools to be here for me to do that job. And in some cases, it's not there. Uh, I, I expect the support from this community and the other board members as I get from uh, two of the trustees as of right now and the, uh, the mayor, Tiffany Henyer. Uh, I expect that from everyone. No one reaches out to me. No one asks any questions. I've heard rumors of a budget where a lot of cuts were made from my department. No one asks me not one time, what are these services for? What are they rendered for? Who does this help? Who does this service? How does it do that? No one has asked me anything. I take these phone calls, these emails. I go meet these residents. I walk these sidewalks. I walk these streets with the, with the, with the administration and, and with the administrators of this community. And we hear the people. And our duty is to give them a service. But these services are being shunned. Uh, by political rhetoric that I don't appreciate because, again, I am here at work. I have not ran for nothing. I come here every day to service this community that has been neglected for over 20, 30 years. The sidewalks are dilapidated. The sewers are dilapidated. The water mains are dilapidated. There's nothing really here that is not dilapidated. Everything needs attention right now. Our water system needs attention right now. We cannot wait for another storm to come through and knock down another water reservoir. If it was not for the actions of this administration during that crisis, we will still be passing out bottles of water like we were in Flint, Michigan. I need the people to wake up and understand what is going on because I refuse to be the fall guy for this water system when I have all these people sitting on this board. I refuse. People need to understand how serious this is because I come here every day and I give a service every day. Don't nobody know this infrastructure like me. I'm here 24 hours a day sometimes. When the, when the tower collapsed, I was here for 48 hours. You can't tell me nothing about this system, nothing. And I'm not an engineer. I know the system because I work on this system. I know the needs of this community because I work in this community and I hear the people, I talk to the people. And I don't like to tell people something that is not true. So when I tell a person they're gonna get a service, they're gonna get this tree off their house. We're gonna get this hole from in front of your house. We're gonna fix this curb that's been dilapidated for 20 years. We're gonna fix this sewer that's been bagging up for 20 years. Or uh, like the gentleman stated here, he has fe fecal matter in his basement. How can I give this gentleman a service if the bills are not gonna be paid in an orderly fashion? That's, what I, that's my question for the board. And normally I don't ask these questions. I tend to stay out of things. But tonight I have a lot of questions. So if anybody can answer that question and sit on this board, what do I tell these people when they email my office? What do I tell these people when they call my phone all night? What do I tell my mayor when she tells me, hey, these people need a service. You need to go over there and take care of it. What do I tell these people? I cannot continue. I don't lie to people. I didn't come here to lie to people. I come here to, to get paid and do a service and, a, and, and give these people a fair service that they have been neglected of for so long, so very long. So I'm very agitated. I'm sure a lot of people can tell because I sit up here for hours. I got to be back here at six o'clock. So I, this isn't helping me at all. Our bill's going to get paid. I got vendors at my door. I got grass growing, weeds growing, streets falling in. Is anything going to happen? Because I'll tell you one thing, before I become the fall guy, I'll point the finger back at you. And Mary, that concludes my report. All right, next we have housing, building permits. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Good evening. board, trustees, uh, directors. I would just like to say, Mayor, I appreciate your diligence. I am not deterred. We're going to continue to work. And what I love about you, the energy, you don't make any excuses, you make adjustments. One thing that uh, Superintendent Stacey Carell he alluded to, we inherited a mess. And you came in with answers. As the director of housing, you were big on customer service because when you think about government, people are mad, they're, they're, they give you the poor attitudes, but you demanded to change the culture. So when you come here, it's like downtown Chicago, okay? And when someone comes to the, through those doors, we're here to serve them. So I appreciate you giving us the opportunity. What they don't realize is that when, when I came here as a director, there were no processes, no procedures, no job descriptions. You demanded that we write those, and we have those in place. We were antiquated. We had a bunch of paper, 
the businesses come in and say, well, how come I can't get business license? There were contractors getting contractors licenses that didn't have no credentials. So you say, we have to change that. We talk about transparency, you demanded transparency. And unfortunately, this is the route we have to take is heavy lifting, but we are built for this. And we're ready to go to whatever heights you take us to, because everybody can't go there. But we have to continue to press on because no one's here at nine o'clock. When those, actually I'm here at 7.30, but the, the phone started ringing at about 10 to nine. When the residents are calling, I appreciate Stacy Carell, every one of these department heads that work so tirelessly because we try to keep the pace with our mayor. So we appreciate you pushing the pace because you love these people. You love the residents. And they're calling. They want results. They don't want arguments. And I'll tell you, they're getting results. I call Stacy's team. I call, I appreciate you, DeMarcus. When someone calls and want things done, you make sure they get done. So I do have a report on the housing permits. We brought in this month 115,200, I mean, 29,058 cents. And it's not enough because it's still a lot of work to be done. And I said, we're, we're for it. I'm not discouraged at all. I refuse to be put along through a political process when people on the other side of this, they need these services. And so I'm here and I appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve this residence. I'm here. I appreciate tr uh, Trustee Holmes. He calls. Trustee Stan Brown, we're not picking out them over that. They call and say, hey, can you take care of this for a residence? I don't get a call from the other trustees. They don't come to me and ask me questions. We're here to serve the people. We're not here about a political game. We're about serving the people. Our doors open. Mayor, you always say, hey, let them come to you so that we can serve the people. So I appreciate it. Keith, who's always, Will, how we doing? Huh? Tanjanique, I want this done. Oh, poor Janice, I don't know how many times I email you every day. But we're here working is what I want you to know. Chief Collins and his team, Deputy Chief Lacey, Fire Chief Pete, we're here to work. So, Mayor, we're not discouraged. We're going to continue to work so that these people can get what they deserve. So I appreciate your time. But please, when you don't see things done in a certain matter, come to us. We're here not to make excuses, but to make adjustments, not for us, but for you. So I thank you for your time. And God bless you all. Thank you, Mayor, for Thank this you. for this time. Okay, next on agenda is corporate bills. Uh, Trustee Stan Brown. This is for you, Ed. <laughs> Go on, Stan. Electronic bills, August the 31st, 2023, corporate payment register, $257,082.90. Water fund register, $353,479.95. Sewer fund register, $1,058.63. American Rescue Plan, $32,550. Melanie Fitness register, $159.00. And 67 cents for a total corporate payments of $644,331.15. We get a motion to accept those bills as read. Is there a second? I'll second. A motion and second. Any discussion? Please call the Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed. All right. Trustee Stanbrown? This time I'll read the Warren Vendor Report. October the 2nd, 2023, corporate payment register, $2,550,341.67. Gross payroll, September the 8th, 2023, $496,763.08. Gross payroll, September the 22nd, 2023, $493,629,025. Additional payroll checks, $3,640.16. Melanie Fitness Center Register, $10,795.88.
for a total corporate payment three million five hundred fifty five thousand one hundred seventy dollars and four cents their motion to accept the bill is being read all right is there a second is there a second there's been a motion made by trustee stan brown is there a second motion it's a second by trustee holmes uh any discussion i have a comment mayor go ahead uh well my question is uh for the public works the agreement that we had four years of uh, hard work that those gentlemen did uh they are entitled to retro payments i was stated this at the last board meeting and i my stance on this is still the same we have many bills on this warrant list that um our vendors that have done work i appreciate the passion and things that are done uh similarly those individuals have worked for four years they have at this moment not been paid their four years of retro payment so my question is do we have a date when that is expected i stated this at the last board meeting that when we negotiated the contract and put it up for a vote public works already know they're not getting their retro until the following year um, we then put it up for them to get paid. They have already received an increase in their salaries or in their pay as it relates to whatever the agreement was for the contract. Um, you know, just like I know that we don't have money to pay uh, retro for them or the police department. So everyone's waiting on retro pay. Thank you. So I will give my stance just so that I'm um, stating it again. And I will state this at every board, at every board meeting. If we have money for all these other items, we should have money to pay those those uh, individuals. And it's, it's frustrating to hear on one hand, we got grants, we got all this other money. And I think this is kind of the the, the haze coming off of the smoke and mirrors. The reality is, if we don't have the money, we don't have the money. We should not keep on incurring more bills, more debt and piling on to the deficit. Uh, some meetings we come in there and say, okay, you keep on trying to scare residents with big words like deficit. Had another resident tell me deficits are scary. That's just the reality. So as we sit here, my, so we passed a contract or an agreement that said that these gentlemen will be paid in 90 days. We should not have entered into a contract if we couldn't honor it. So as we're going through these bills, and I really mean this, I will not be approving every bill until these individuals are paid. That's just my vote and where I stand on it. Thank you. All right. For the record, pay attention, residents. I know it's election time for some that wants to be mayor and trustee houses campaigning. Um, he had never had a voice as long as he has sat on this board when I was a trustee with him. And guess what? The thing that we may happen is we put their contract before us, meaning the public works and also the police department. Um, prior to that, four years ago, this same problem existed. He could have had the same sentiments, same questions to Mayor Riley. No one ever thought to make them whole, but guess what? You're a mayor, Tiffany Henry. So with that being said, he knows this. He could have said something four years ago, two years ago, one year ago, as it relates to making them whole. They voted to basically approve their contract. And in negotiations, which we said at the board meeting, the lawyers know, the lawyers here that actually negotiated the contract, they know they're not getting the back pay until the following year. Everyone knows that. If that's the case, then why vote for the contract? It was our way of saying, hey, we are with you. We're going to make sure you are complete meaning it may hold, give us time. But until then, we're going to make sure that you get an increase in your salary, which the board did not actually figure out what they're going to get the money for to pay the increase in their salary. So if you pay attention to our salaries that we pay out every two weeks is basically a half million dollars just about. So where did you get the extra $100,000 increase to make them whole? Where are we going to find them funds to make sure we can keep up with the increase in payroll? So no one's thinking about any of these things, but everybody talking. Then you want to say, hey, I'm not going to pay any vendors. The vendors are doing the work. What they got to do with that? Nothing. The vendors are doing the work. The residents are getting service. Your trees are getting trimmed. Concrete is getting poured. If there is a water main break, they come out and guess who fills the hole? You have EPA issues. You have all kinds of things that actually happen in this village. So for them to sit here and keep saying they're not going to pay somebody because of a contract, trustee house, stop it. Stop politicking up here and take care of the residents and take care of the vendors that actually came and did the work in our time of need. I don't like the fact, and I'm going to repeat, that these trustees 
sit here and put us in the negative with things because they do not pay people. So a lot of people be afraid to come and do work here at the village because we are known for not paying our vendors. So now you're messing up relationships as though some that builds them, but some of them sticks with us. But some people cannot hold a tab and keep on working every month, every month, every month and spending their money to pay their employees. We have to do what's right. If they do the work, pay them for their work because the residents got that service. And that is what the issue is. Don't try to make it about something other than that. That one vendor got up there and said, y'all want them vacants cut? He cut them down. That's the number one complaint that people call in housing. They live next door to a abandoned um, property or vacant, and then they want it trimmed. They want trees gone from around it because they got kids or grandbabies. They out playing. They want nobody pulled up in there. And you too should want that because now we're stopping the squatters. We're stopping all these issues that we get because people just been living in these vacant houses. Little do y'all know. And then you have other areas in town where you got hoarders going on. We had a whole prostitution ring that we busted on Trustee Norwood's block. She stayed two, three houses from me. So that's why I be trying to tell y'all. And we got three stolen cars. They was in the garage. These are the blocks they live on, uh, allegedly live on. So all I'm telling you is that we still out here doing our job. Come on, man. Help us. Help the people. Stop getting up here pointing out something that got nothing to do with the other. And let's make the vendors whole because they help us in our time of need. And we still need them to produce for the resident. All right. May I be recognized? Go ahead. Um, I have a couple of questions and maybe... Janice uh, or Tangini can answer it. I know that we have an electronic warrant list, but then on this AP list, there are some items on here that have already been paid with the credit card. So I'm trying to understand why they're on the AP warrant list versus the electronic warrant list. You want you want to know why, why they're on the AP warrant list in, instead of the electronic warrant list and they were paid with the credit card. Okay, Janice. Which vendors are you speaking about? Okay, image one um, for $4,726. Um, the balance, it was $2,000 that was paid with the credit card. And then it said it was a balance of $4,726 that is, was paid with the credit card. Then it's uh, Juicy Crab. That was a, a township event in Alabama that was paid with the credit card. And it's on this warrant list. Then is Jim and Nick's barbecue, which was a township event in Alabama, and it was paid with a credit card. Then it was Madison Street Family Restaurant that has no receipt attached to it. And then it was Pete's that was paid with a credit card. I'm just asking because I want to know why it's not on the electronic warrant list versus the AP warrant list. Okay, and before you answer that, Janet, stop lying, uh, trustee. What am I lying uh, about? Keep saying it's a township event. It's not a township event. For the record, anybody that want to go to any conference can go. So stop trying to act like we have in our own events because we do not. Anybody can sign up for a conference and go to it and get educated. Mayor, so stop doing that. Don't don't lie to the residents like that. Mayor, when you went to Alabama, was it a town? Did you go as a township supervisor or as the mayor, Dalton? Why you were about how I went? I'm just asking the question. It's discussion. I just asked the it's question. It's discussion, but I don't have to tell you how I went. If it's, okay, not, on, if well, it's not on the list, if, I, if I don't if know. If it's not on the list, right, because you could have asked me that before, right? If I, you really truly I, it's, it's discussion now. Okay. So, so here we go. I don't go. Janice, can you answer the question? I don't go anywhere. My telling you what to say. From here. Because remember, y'all ain't got the money, right? Make up your mind. Y'all got the money, do, or y'all do. So stop saying township okay. events. Okay, I'm so asking the question. So that's why I'm correcting you, trustee. That's why I'm correcting you because you got it wrong. That's okay, so true. did you go as the mayor or did you go as the township supervisor? Again, this ain't no Q&A for Tiffany. You hear you? It's discussion. And I just told you. I just asked Okay, you. well, nevertheless, so I said I you got it wrong. Do out. not put the township why involved in don't. Why they're on the AP warrant list versus the electronic warrant list. So when, they're, when the warrant lists are compiled, there may have been some that were entered as actual invoices when they were credit cards, but we can get that updated for you and provide you with the uh, updated list. Okay. I just want to know, because if we just would have approved it, then they would have cut checks and they was already. No, we wouldn't. We would have. Okay. It. All right. My next question is, do we have a tentative budget of any additional expenses for Greenwood project? Is there a budget for this? 
Who is that for? I, you can answer. Yes, we do. Okay, can you tell me the budget amount? Sure, I'll get you a budget. So you don't know that we're about to spend another forty thousand dollars this month for this Greenwood project? You just asked me and I answered. So you can assume whatever you want. Until I'm not you assuming see the anything. I'm me, looking on then, the paper. Then you can hold me accountable for the numbers that you're throwing out. I'm don't not assuming anything. Out. I'm just you, reading. You on are paper. assuming. You are assuming. Okay. And then and for then, the record, when we spend money for the Greenwood project, so residents understand, it's through grant money. It has I just nothing asked, to do with. You hold on, because I want to clear it up because you guys tell lies. So I want to make sure that they know what line item that come from. And you can see that in my viewpoint. So all your answers are really answered in my viewpoint, but you want to put on the show. So let's go. I'm not putting on the show. I'm you asking you a go question. Ahead. If you I know it's in my viewpoint, then you answer. I, I then answer. my last go question ahead. was um, the $17,550 for the skates. Mm -hmm. Are those skates for the entire community? Yes, it is. Okay. And where are they located? Why would I tell you that right now? I'm saying, are they in possession of the village of Dalton? Why That's would they ask me? You asked the question, I answered. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Any more discussion? Yes, Mayor Hubbard, can I have one more comment? Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to kind of reiterate again because on one hand, we say we have all this money, and then when it comes time to pay individuals, public works, uh, we also have other individuals who have been approved oh, by this okay. board. Okay. I can throw out a couple of MBD solutions. We've received in the last four months two notices from our health insurance, Blue Cross Blue Shield, that they were behind in paying and they threatened cutting us off. Also, prior to this recent court decision, congratulations, you won that. But during that time frame, we discovered five different instances where the village of Dalton were overdrawn in the bank accounts. These are real concerns. If we have the money, I guess my question then would be, uh, if approved, will all these things, including public works payment for the gentlemen that are doing the hard work, will those be paid immediately? I just answered that, and the attorney just said, you spoke already, so I should move on because you're just repeating the same thing, and you already know the answer as it relates to public works. So that is the answer, and you was on the bank account, sir. You were. You and Clerk Key was on the bank account, so all that action or blaming stopped. You guys had control of it. You knew the day-to-day. -day. You knew the amounts that's in the account. You guys had control over the complete bank account. So moving on. Anybody else for discussion? Yeah, ma'am. I'll be ready. Go ahead. So the, the, the concern is the, the budgeting for these, for these projects. No one is against getting trees cut. The problem is when we see, and, and that's why I say, I know you said that we do RFPs. Yes, the engineer department does RFPs, but anyone who's attended these meetings haven't heard of RFP being presented in a whole entire year and a half. So when we ask, we're asking because it's a concern. When I look at this warrant list, we have $352,105 on tree trimming, just on this warrant list. But yet we have John Pros who come to us and say, well, he's giving you a quote of $2.6 million to cut every tree down in the village. So these are real concerns. Trees have two, two very important reasons why they are here. One, we need them for oxygen. And two, they assist with the flooding. So when we say, okay, what, how are we going about cutting the trees? When you drive around the village, I notice we, we're, cut, we're paying these companies money to trim the trees. And then the following month, we're paying them again to cut the tree down. So now we're double dipping. We're paying them twice. So when you as a trustee, you constantly say, where is the tree list? Where is the tree list? But when we ask about the tree list, there's a, a big stink. And all we're doing is asking questions. That's why we have discussion. If we have a cow meeting, these RFPs, again, will be presented. We'll all know how much we're paying these vendors. And it won't be a surprise. If the ordinance state, okay, you say it states $20,000, up to $20,000, you don't need board approval. Well, we have $602,000, $602,105 in trees from August to October. So the question is, okay, when is it, is it after, if this is approved, then do we do another 600? Are we doing $350,000 a month in trees? Just tell us what we're doing. Bring RFPs in front of us so that we know. It's not a concern with paying the, the, for the trees. The concern is how we paying these people and are we being overcharged? 
are we why are we paying them to trim and then paying them to cut it down so that's a concern and then the reason why the whole greenwood road avenue or greenwood is being discussed is because when you see this i know they say grants 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 but yet this is coming from the general budget. So where are the grants? When I look and see 130,000 for epoxy floor for the skate rink. Yes, it looks nice, but can we afford it? So what we're spending, all we're asking is that you bring the spending in front of us, not just us as a board. At this point, we're used to not receiving information, but bring it in front of the residents so that they, their questions are answered. So that when they see Raul and John Pros, they know exactly who's cutting and exactly how much we are paying them. It will be public knowledge. It doesn't have to be a secret every time we ask a question. It's a big production. If we could just get our questions answered and if we have the cow meat, we can ask them without all the frustration and all the tension. So moving forward, I'm hoping that we can do our piece so that we know exactly what vendors are getting compensated, what work they are doing, are we, is this a beautification project where we're just cutting down trees in the entire village or is, are we cutting down just the ones that the residents have fallen on their home? Because when I look at a $602,000 invoice, it's their questions, okay? How many trees are we, how often are we going to do this? Are we going to do this every month? Are we going to do RFPs every month? Can you just tell us that so that we don't have to be surprised every time we see a warrant list? Thank you. Mayor, can I be recognized? Yes, go ahead. Uh, trustee, uh, to answer some of your questions, there is a backlog of about 10 years for emergency cut downs in this community, uh, let alone the storms that come through this community. Uh, every tree is not the same, depending on what happened, whether it fell during a storm or it's dying or diseased. We also have a high number of diseased trees in the community. The Asian longhorn beetle is in this community, as well as termites. So a good percent of these trees are emergency cut downs, and it is a backlog of uh, about 10 years on these cut downs. And when it is emergency related, uh, we do not have to do certain things for emergencies. So I hopefully that answered your question. So 600,000 in trees is not is was I said, I said a percentage. Okay, so I'm explaining to you that this is six hundred and two thousand mm -hmm. dollars in three months. That average is about two hundred thousand dollars in trees. I'm not going to argue with you because you're the expert. But all we're saying is, if you I'm not a tree expert, I'll just give you an example. Okay. Well, I know that you you, you 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 spoke up. So I'm saying to you again, my concern is if we do the RFPs, we know when I go and I drive around, I see trees that are cut down that are healthy. So we're cutting down trees that we don't need to cut down. Then I've went over some and I see they're cutting the trees that we don't need to cut down, but then there's trees right next to it where they do need to be cut down. So all I'm saying is, again, if you bring the tree list, we'll all know. The tree, the tree list won't answer all of okay. the questions because again, neither one of us are tree specialists, but exactly. if there was exactly. uh, a disease with the tree, I didn't, I didn't disrupt you trustee. If there was something wrong with the tree, or a disease with the tree, uh, it would be identified by the tree companies and then we will be notified and give the okay if that tree had to go down instead of letting the disease spread rampant, which is also causing us more money in insurance claims for falling trees on cars and houses and uh, in some cases people. Okay, so question for you. Who, because normally when I go in towns, I see like exes or they have a third party that comes uh -huh. in and scope out the work and say, hey, because you said it's a backlog. So if it's a backlog, then that means there should be a list. So if there's a list, all we're saying is present it to us so, so we know because the list is already in effect, obviously, if it's a backlog. But not only that, the whole thing is, again, which tree, who's going out? Do we have a third party or are we just letting, are we just telling me? Them? I am the, I just said it earlier in my report. Okay. I'm walking up every street and looking at every tree, sewer, at anything you can think of in this neighborhood, I've looked at it. Gotcha. So I go up down every street, some of these residents can contest to that. And I personally, not my staff, nobody, I personally go and mark the trees. And then if I have any questions, I ask the tree professionals about the question and they give me their opinion. Gotcha, okay. So, and I'm going to say this, is no need to go back and forth with you. Again. No, we're just having a discussion, no, trustee. Yeah, I, I don't know. If we're paying $600,000, we should be able to know exactly what trees are being cut. The healthy ones shouldn't be cut. And the ones that need to be remediated, it should be done. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. If we bring the RFPs again, 
it, it doesn't take long. We, could, we have a half a cow meat. We're supposed to have a cow meat, even if you identify them. It's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, guys, I walk through the village. And no, I get it. I get that. Of trees. Mm -hmm. I'm going to present it to the board. It's a quick email. Hey, these are the trees that really needs to be done. Let's prioritize the spending. That's all I'm saying. 600000 just sounds like a ridiculous amount for three months. For a municipality, that's not. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And for the record, we got to get things done. All the back and forth that you guys not never going to pass anything or come to another meeting and sit here like this to go back and forth over paying people that we owe the money to have a cow meeting to do what? Sit here for hours away from our family, our loved ones. All these people got family up here. But we sitting here in the residence too, sitting here going back and forth on should we pay a vendor that actually did the work in our town or which tree you cutting or is this tree healthy? And we know experts to that. Your area, we went down and did the entire west side, entire west side. So now nobody got to call about a tree, not a soul. We didn't skip not one house. And if a resident came out, had a problem with sewer problems or whatever the issue was, that's what he's alluding to, telling you that he went and he handled all of that, literally. But everybody was happy when no house missed. So now that area is completely done. Now you move to another segment of the town and you do the same exact thing because it's been neglect for years. The trees have never been pruned or cut, trim, maintenance, nothing. They literally falling all in the street. Or if you park your car, the tree is on your car. That's bad. You can't even see the light. Like some areas when we cut on the west side where you stay, we cut back the trees. It lit the whole block up. They don't even need a new light. They just needed the trees trimmed. So everyone's happy. Everyone's happy about those type of things. Instead of we got to keep going through all these, okay, what about this? Or what, okay, if this healthy, is that wrong? Like, come on, people just want services. As long as they're doing the work, let's get it done. And all I'm asking you guys to do is just support so we don't have to be in meetings this long. So we can get through our town and fix it. Because at least y'all got somebody that's active and out there doing the work. All you guys got to do is just come and show up at a board meeting. They go do all the work, the department heads, the ones that y'all beat up, drag on the internet, put on Facebook, talk about their families, like they not family members. So all I'm saying is like, that ain't cool, man. Let, let's fix it, because we are the elected officials. So let's fix it. Go ahead, trustee. I like to add uh, to that. Um, I like to say, uh, we're not, I have seen them out there, trust me, they're not trimming the tree and coming back and cutting it down. They right. got too much work to do double work in the short length of time. And also, a lot of the trees that's being cut, some of these residents themselves are paying contractors to, to cut trees down. So these are not all uh, village uh, contractors. You got some residents that's paying out of their own pocket to get some of these trees cut down because these trees, if you see a tall tree, just imagine how long the roots are. They, they're <clears throat> messing up an uh, individual uh, piping system. So residents are paying themselves they getting trees cut down in the back as well as in the front because the roots, not that the tree is, is a dead tree, the tree is just too big that's in front of the house in the parkway. It's cracking the sidewalks and it's messing up their pipes. So you got residents that's actually spending money also on getting those trees trimmed. All right. That's the motion and second. Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. No. Trustee Stanley Brown. Yes. Trustee House? No. Trustee Holmes? Yes. Trustee Belcher? No. Yeah. Motion All that discussion for nothing. All right, so are we paying any bills tonight, guys? I just need yes, to know so we can move on. Amended motion. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I motion to pay the bills as read with the following um, removals from the warrant list. Uh, page four, DD's discounts, $918.81. Page five, discount fence. $27,846. Page six, existing concrete, $14,123.03. Page six, five star, $57,625. Page six, four heating and air conditioning, $10,700. $10, Page seven, imagine one, $4,726. Page eight, Jim. Jim and Nick's Barbecue, $157.22. Page 8, John's Pro Tree Services, $155,000. Page 8, Juicy Crab, $362.28. Page 8, <coughs> K&M Ventures, $157,150. Page 9, Lopez Lawn Maintenance, $10,050. 
page nine, Madison Street Family Restaurant, $141.61. Page 11, Pete's Fresh Market, $212.97. Page 12, Pekarski & Sons, $27,155. Page 12, Prestige Maintenance Services, $22,255. Page 13, Raul & Sons, $169,950. Page 14, Sophia Tamales and Corn, $2,400. Page 14, Starter Heating and Cooling, $11,500. Page 14, Thank Me Later, $520. Page 15, 2J Sheet Metal Works, $58,750. Page 16, West Side Tractor Sales, $17,850.62. And page 16, White Coat Pool Solutions, $9,816. Uh, my motion is to approve the bills with the following items removed. Second. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So it's been a motion and a second. And residents, this is my prime example of why things don't move in our village and why um, vendors be upset with people not paying. He might as well just didn't pay any of the bills. He didn't call it off the whole bills list. And for the record, I keep telling them, if they learn what it is they should be doing, which is, our authority is what, trustee house? You putting out two hundred dollars and a hundred and something dollars. You don't have authority to remove stuff like that. If if my authority is five thousand, his authority twenty thousand, twenty five, whichever the number is. How you pulling out the smallest little bill, a hundred something dollars? That's just you being petty. And then residents, remember we had that explosion here in the village of Dalton when the water tank blew up. He took that out. How does it get fixed? All I can do is just point out the things that I keep telling y'all. So if you don't have water, that's why our reservoir is our water sits. We have to fix that. That's number one. Number two, we put a gate up. It came right out when we had our emergency. This is my point of relationships. When you have an emergency and you call somebody out and they come without payment and they give us the service, we need to pay them the money. But they seem to think we shouldn't pay them. But they did the service already in our time. And so now what do you do? So the concrete didn't fall on nobody. Somebody had to secure it because we, we don't do that. That ain't what we do up here. But this is my point that I keep trying to make to y'all. You can't keep not paying vendors. Other than that, y'all going to have to do COD with everything we do here because ain't nobody going to trust that we're going to pay them their money in two weeks or a month. Nobody's going to trust it. But yet come to another meeting to do this same thing for what? Nothing's getting done with them. Nothing. And it's sad that everybody can sit here and vote for something like that and be okay with not paying people. That much, I don't know how y'all pay y'all bills. I don't. i never seen this ever in my life. You still got to pay your bills. Other than that, your lights off, your gas off, your water off, if you don't pay. So what's making us any different? We, are, we the village. All I can do is just keep explaining this to y'all, hoping that somebody would have a change of heart and say, you know what, we're going to pay. I'm telling you that we want to fix the pool. I'm telling you the pool for the open, but you don't want to make sure they got the right chemicals in it. You want to take that out. Why? Why can't we fix it and give back to the kids? Why can't y'all swim for free? Why? These are things y'all should ask yourselves because all that, all that stuff he just named was important things that people don't even know because he just reading off. But I just named a couple things that's really important that we're working on right now. So why are you stopping it? We got teams coming to fix the, the water tank right now. So it's just going to stay like that forever. We ain't never going to fix it. So then something else happened and the other tank blow up. Now where do we get our water from? These are all important things. But yet they think it's fun and games to sit here and take people out. We need certain vendors to help us in our time of need when we can just pick up a phone and call. Them people came out at literally 5, 6 in the morning. 2 a.m. Uh, Tony Pratt would go send her people out. But we're not paying the people that's coming when we really need them in our crisis. Why would they do it? You just mess that whole relationship up. We're a village. We're not a regular person where you got to go do a COD. But now the village got to do that? Come on now. you rather mess up our credibility and our name off of political infight. That you need to put that to the side because the residents matter first. Safety matters first. Things that you're going to need later and something happen, all they're going to do, who they going to point at? Everybody, when they do the news, they say the mayor's office. Mayor office got nothing to do with this. This is all the trustees. They the one stopping progress. They the one not paying people. They the one why that gentleman came up here and said, pay me. But they keep taking people out. Cholera. Oh, you got something? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Possibility 
Ele vai onde tem um salto. Os morros não ajudam a ir ao peito. So we we don't we have people that we've already approved, already been approved, still not getting their checks. Those people need to be taken care of first. I'm not even going to beat my drum again about the public works employees. So I think we take care of our old stuff first, and then we start moving moving on to these. Um, it was mentioned in here. We don't even have a budget right now, and we're spending thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars into the millions without a budget. $2.8 million in the deficit today, this fiscal year, $2.5 million in deficit last year. And I respect your point of view or your opinion in terms of the bonds. Other communities don't have to take out bonds. They have surpluses. They have reserves. So I'm uh, I'm opposed to that. Yeah, I'm, South, uh, Everybody South Holland, got right up the street. The same communities we talk about we want to mimic don't have deficits. And I want to deprogram that that concept that government runs off deficit. It doesn't. Poorly managed governments run on deficits. We have not taken out a um, we haven't taken out a bond since 2009, trustee. All those things. So, but to answer your question, and I appreciate it, I, I, I genuinely feel you come from a, a good place. So I want to make sure I'm giving you that same respect, or I hope I'm doing so. Um, my concerns are that we don't have the money we're piling more more debt on top of stuff that's already not being paid so my suggestion is let's actually approve a budget let's pay our past due stuff and then work to address this current these current items but i do appreciate what your your question are you done trustee yeah yep may i be recognized man oh. okay go ahead you know there's a there's an off office in a conference room over there that should have been used before we got to this point hmm. to address all the issues. And I do believe every vendor and everyone that did work here should be paid simply because if a person is hungry, you need food. These people get up, come to work. You know, what, what, what are you going to say? What are we going to say if we don't get this water fixed over there? We're going to be hauling in water and begging people for bottles of water. We should do what we're supposed to do and what we got elected for. Let's just pay these people, move on, and just continue to do the work that we got to do. I mean, Dalton is on the rise. You see the work that has been done out here. You see the public works out here. You see the police out here. You see concrete, concrete vendors out here. You, you see the work is being done. It ain't like the work is not being done. I mean, we need to just sit down, work together, and pay these people. We don't need to be on and get interest on money and we worrying about a deficit. Let's just take care of what we got at hand here. I mean, Concrete, trees, the work is being done, and like I stated, and I'll state again, there's a conference room over there. Everybody has the phone numbers. Where's the tra transparency there and communicating? But it always until we get here. And you know it's a roadblock when we get here. But there's not a roadblock when it's time to issue them paychecks out for us as individuals and taxpayers are paying for us. So we need to do what we have to do to keep this village moving, pay the vendors. I'm done. Mayor Mappy, recommend. All right, there's been motion and uh, second. Please call around. Huh? Yeah, repeat. I'll take care. Go ahead, call around. Hello. That's fine. Trustee Norwood. The amended uh, motion Aye. to pay the bills. We're taking all those vendors out. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Um, the, so the warrant list had, I want to say, approximately 18 pages. 
all vendors with the exclusion, and I'll I'll give the number of buy vendors. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. There's twenty one vendors I'm seeing on the on this list here. So all vendors with the exception of those read into record. May I be recognized just for clarity? Um, as I stated by our first discussion, some of those which Ms. Uh, Johnson said that would be updated that he read off was items that have already been paid with a credit card. So those items have been paid with a credit card already. So they're just being removed off of this list. Um, so I just want to make that clear. And also, um, I don't understand how we sit here and keep saying that there's no deficit. And we every time we get to the board meeting, when it's time for corporate bills, that's when everything go left. Um, I know I would like to ask Ms. Johnson, but I'm sure she's been told not to say how many checks she actually have sitting on her desk that haven't even been sent out yet. So we pay, we had approval of $4 million two months ago, and it's probably still $2 million sitting on her desk that haven't even been sent out. All right. Anything else? All right. Call her up, please. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. No. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. No. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. All right. And please stop making uh, false statements up here. So next on the agenda is new business. Um, can I have a motion to terminate the contract of Otis and Stirk Murphy, Frazier and McGrath, LTD as legislative council? Motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been motion and second. Any discussion? Nobody? Any discussion? So I put this on the agenda because it is so needed how everybody keeps telling y'all um, about deficits and all these issues, but yet they keep their legislative counsel. Um, if you want to reduce uh, this alleged uh, deficit, why don't you start there? That will take a million dollars right there off the top, right there. But you guys won't do it. Um, this person keeps on um, doing fake um, things around here and causing a lot of trouble and turmoil between us as elected officials and basically he just running up the clock he's been doing a money grab forever and I've been saying this saying this saying this and residents now you see it because every single lawsuit that he has anything to do with it and it's shameful that these trustees follow behind somebody that's leading them wrong I guess unless everybody get, getting something um, it's a shame that they keep on bringing him on for things that's illegal, unconstitutional, and now people are gonna have actual cases just because y'all following wrong. That's sad, and I would not want to see anybody in a situation like that. But you can't keep following wrong and costing the taxpayer money. Prime example: all the lawsuits that y'all have lost and the money grab that he just recently tried to do. I think you guys need to wake up and now throw in the towel and come on and let go this. Odison group. So there's a motion to second. Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. No. Trustee Stanley Brown. Yes. Trustee House. No. Trustee Holmes. Yes. Trustee Belcher. No. Motion failed. Y'all taxpayer dollars. That's what I'm pointing out to you. Next, is there a motion to discuss and approve? Approval of the IDOT resolutions for maintenance under the Illinois Highway Code and performance by consultant engineer section number 22-24550-00 GM and 23-50-00 GM. This is the one that Ron Engineer just explained. Is there a motion? A motion. Is there, is there second, a second. Second. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. 
Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Next on the agenda is discussion and approval of ordinance number 23 dash amending the village of Dalton Code of ordinances related to hazardous materials impact fee. This is the one that Chief McCain just spoke about. A lot of times we have things that come in our community that's on trains. And if a train collide with a car or a crash or derail, get derailed for whatever reason, we want to be able to clean up those chemicals and not only that, oppose fees. Um, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion and second? Any discussion? Please call around. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Next on the agenda is discussion and approval of ordinance number 23 dash authorizing the issuance of the 3.9 million general obligation tax attendance anticipation warrants uh, in anticipation of the collector, the collection of tax levy for the tax year of 2022 by the village of Dalton. Um, is there a motion? A motion. Is there a second? Second. Se it's been a motion in a second. And for those that don't know what that is or what we're doing, it's basically us taking out a loan because our taxes will be late this year like it was last year. The difference is the county um, gave us the loan last year. This year we have to go out and get the money because it won't come in until like November, December, and we don't want to be without money in our fund. So that's the reason for this that you see. And basically once they um, give us our money, then we repay, we repay this back. Um, it's been motion second. Please call around. Well, Mayor, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I know last year it was at zero percent. Is that still the same this year? I do not know the number by heart. Let me ask the attorney. Do you have the do you have number? We just going. Do out. I? No, I don't. Okay. I don't know. So she said I, I was they're going out. Me. They're going out to get it now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, call around. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion and second? Please call around. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Stanley Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Holmes. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Meeting adjourned at 1023. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>